Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FrenchPod101.com. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 language learning strategies. So let's begin. Liez-vous d'amitié ou mettez-vous en couple avec une personne française? befriending or dating someone who speaks French. So I think that's a really great strategy to, to learn the language if you speak every day with a person that is your friend or your boyfriend. Regardez des films ou écoutez de la musique en français. Watching movies or listening to music in French. So I think it can help you to learn the language more easily if every day you watch some movies if, even with subtitles like this, it helps you to see what is written and everything. Lisez des journaux français ou magazines français. Read French newspapers or French magazines. So that will help you very much with the language because you will see words that you've never seen before. And eventually you can look them up in the dictionary and like this you can know what it means. Enregistrez votre voix. 
et comparez votre prononciation avec des Français natifs. Record your voice and compare your pronunciation with native French speakers. So I think that really helps with the accent. Like this, you can hear how you sound. You can watch my videos again and like this, you can compare how I speak with how you speak and you'll see if it matches or not. Télécharger des pistes de dialogue et écouter les conversations françaises. Download dialogue tracks and listen to French conversations. So that will really help you with the accent you know, the way everybody talks, you will be able to learn new words and you will be able to, for example, if they ask a question, you're able to answer. Répétez les expressions que vous entendez à voix haute, encore et encore. Repeat the phrases that you hear out loud again and again. So I think that's a really good strategy in order to learn French to repeat over and over again what you just listened to or what you just learned because it will help you uh, to have that in your mind and you'll be able to say it more easily. Revoyez toutes les leçons sur frenchpod101.com pour les maîtriser complètement. Review all the lessons on frenchpod101.com to master them completely. That will really help you to speak better French if uh, you go back and review all the videos that I have done or other French native have done. Um, and yeah, like this, you'll be able to master it really completely and you'll be able to use it in quite a few different um, situations. Lisez les phrases lentement au début, après relisez-les et augmentez votre vitesse. Read sentences slowly at first, then reread them and increase your speed. I think that's a really thing to do because at first you want to have the pronunciation right. So it's better, you know, to decompose the word little by little. And then see, when you're going to be more comfortable, you'll be able to say it like really quickly. Donnez-vous des petits et mesurables objectifs pour apprendre avec des dates limites propres. Set small and measurable learning goals with your personal deadlines. So I think that's really good if you give yourself some deadline and do not try to learn too much at first because you might just quit if you do that. So that's better if you give yourself, you know, little by little to, to learn and uh, give yourself deadline as well. That's a re really good thing to see if you improve or not. Essayez des leçons qui sont plus difficiles pour vous surpasser et vous améliorer rapidement. Try harder lessons to challenge yourself and improve faster. So at first you're going to learn those quick and simple words, but then you want to challenge yourself and learn more complex sentences, for example. So that's better if you try to learn harder lessons. I see you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about how to ask for and give directions. Let's begin. The first pattern is Où est le, la, les? Où est le, la, les? Where is the? Où means where. There is a grave accent on Où to tell the difference between Où, which means or, but the pronunciation remains the same. Here is a simple sentence. Où est la banque? Which means, where is the bank? The next pattern is, je dois aller au. Je dois aller au. This means, I need to go to the. Je dois means, I have to, or I need to, and comes from devoir, which is an irregular verb. For example, you can say, je dois aller au commissariat, which means I need to go to the police station. Comment puis-je aller au? Comment puis-je aller au? This means, how do I get to the? Comment means how. Puis-je means can I. Aller means to go. And au is the preposition you need to use before masculine nouns. For example, you can say, 
Comment puis-je aller au musée? Which means, how do I get to the museum? Est-ce qu'il y a un, une près d'ici? Est-ce qu'il y a un, une près d'ici? This means, is there a near here? For example, est-ce qu'il y a une bibliothèque près d'ici? Means, is there a library near here? Don't get confused with librairie and bibliothèque. Librairie means bookshop. Library in French is bibliothèque. The next pattern is, excusez-moi, savez-vous où est le, là? Excusez-moi, savez-vous où est le, là? This means, excuse me, do you know where the m is? When you don't know the person you are speaking to, use vous instead of tu. Both mean you, but tu is informal and vous is formal. For example, you can say, excusez-moi, savez-vous où est le parc? Which means, excuse me, do you know where is the park? Est-ce que le, la, m est loin d'ici? Est-ce que le, la, m est loin d'ici? This means, is the, m far from here? Est-ce que literally means, is it that? A convenience of everyday French is that a phrase can easily be turned from a statement into a question. For example, you can say, est-ce que la poste est loin d'ici? Which means, is the post office far from here? Tournez à gauche. Tournez à gauche. This means turn left. This is the basic indication to go left. The first word tourner means turn. It is followed by à, which means to. Lastly, we have gauche, which means left. For example, you can say tournez à gauche au deuxième pâté de maison, which means turn left at the second block. Tournez à droite. Tourner à droite. This means turn right. This is similar to turn left. You just have to substitute gauche with droite, which means right. For example, you can say Tournez à droite au troisième feu de circulation, which means turn right at the third traffic light. Allez tout droit. Allez tout droit. This means go straight. This is the basic indication to go straight. The first word aller means go and ends in the imperative form. The next two words tout droit mean straight. For example, you can say aller tout droit, puis tournez à gauche au prochain feu, which means go straight and turn left at the next light. Passer devant. Passer devant. This means go past. Passé means to pass, and passé devant means to go past. Devant is a preposition meaning in front of. For example, you can say, passé devant l'église, which means go past the church. À l'angle de. À l'angle de. This means at the corner of. This sentence may help you to indicate a particular place. For example, you can say, c'est à l'angle de l'avenue, meaning it's at the corner of this avenue. An avenue is a big, wide street in an urban area. En face de. En face de. This means in front of. For example, la station de bus est en face du supermarché. This means the bus station is in front of the supermarket. Traveling in France by bus is easy and cheap. Every city has its own public transit system. Of course, it's easier if you speak a little French. Derrière. Derrière. This means behind. For example, le parking se trouve derrière la salle de cinéma. This means the parking lot is behind the movie theater. Se trouver is a transitive verb that means to be located somewhere or can be found. It can be about an object or a person. À côté de. À côté de. This means next to. À côté de means next to or nearby and is a very common word in French. 
It is used to indicate the relative physical positions of one thing to another. For example, you can say Le restaurant est à côté du parc, which means the restaurant is next to the park. Entre. Entre. This means between. For example, you can say Le magasin est entre le café et l'animalerie, which means the store is between the coffee shop and the pet store. In French, café refers to both the drink and the place where you can drink it. Animalerie is a pet shop. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about 15 ways to complain in French. Let's go! The first complaint is Je suis fatigué. Je suis fatigué. I am tired. This is a basic and a convenient sentence to use when you are tired. Don't forget that all French adjectives agree in gender with the nouns they describe. So if you are a girl, you are fatigué with e -E. Il fait chaud. Il fait chaud. This means it's hot. When referring to the weather in French, we don't say c'est, it is, but rather we say il fait. For example, il fait chaud, it's hot. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. This means it's cold. This is similar to il fait chaud, but you just have to substitute chaud, hot, with froid, which means cold. C'est trop cher. C'est trop cher. This means it's too expensive. If you want to complain about something being expensive, this sentence is perfect. Trop means too much and cher is an adjective that means expensive. The next complaint is c'est bruyant. C'est bruyant. This means it's noisy. Bruyant is an adjective meaning noisy and loud. You can use it to describe a place, an object, or a person. The next complaint is Je meurs de faim. Je meurs de faim. This means I'm starving. Meurs comes from the verb mourir, which means to die. It means you are so hungry you could die. J'ai grossi. J'ai grossi. This means I got fat. This comes from the verb grossir, meaning to put on weight. The opposite is mincir, to get slimmer. Je suis toujours ruiné. Je suis toujours ruiné. This means I'm always broke. The French adverb toujours has several meanings. It may mean always, anyway, anyhow, at least, or still. Mon travail est ennuyeux. Mon travail est ennuyeux. This means my job is boring. Ennuyeux is a French adjective meaning boring. It can apply to a person, an object, or a place. The next complaint is cette personne pue. Cette personne pue. This means that person stinks. Puer is a verb and has different meanings. It can mean to smell bad, to stink, or to smell fishy. With this sentence, you may complain about someone who smells bad or who's uncool or repulsive. Il n'y a plus de saison. Il n'y a plus de saison. This means seasons don't count for anything anymore. The weather is a basic talking point in France. Everyone in France loves to talk about the weather and they particularly like to complain about it. The Wi-Fi ici est trop lent. The Wi-Fi ici est trop lent. This means the Wi-Fi here is too slow. In French, you can say Wi-Fi or Internet when referring to the Internet. Lent means slow. Il y a trop de circulation. Il y a trop de circulation. This means there is too much traffic. Circulation in French means trafic. But you can also use the word traffic, which is similar to the English word traffic. Mon patron est chiant. Mon patron est chiant. This means my boss is annoying. 
Chiant is a slang word, but be careful as it is very casual. Basically, it means boring or annoying. Le salaire est trop bas. Le salaire est trop bas. This means the wage is too low. You use this phrase when you want to complain about your salary. Bas in this situation means low. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Leah and today we'll learn about 10 phrases you will need for a date. Ta-da! Tu veux aller dîner avec moi? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Tu veux aller dîner avec moi? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Which is the most basic way to invite someone on a date, I guess. Invite them for dinner. Tu es libre ce weekend? Are you free this weekend? Tu es libre ce weekend? Are you free this weekend? Are you? I am, I don't have anything to do this weekend. Let's go do something. Hmm, like eating cookies. Second most basic way to invite someone on a date. What do you do on a weekend date? Let me know in the comments. Tu veux traîner avec moi? Would you like to hang out with me? Tu veux traîner avec moi? Would you like to hang out with me? That, that's a bit... Like if you're with your bros, you know, and you'll be like, Oh, uh, tu veux traîner? Tu veux traîner avec moi? Oh, yo. <laughs> that, that's kind of a street way to say that. It's like Netflix and chill, but just the chill part. I don't know. If the girl you want to invite is wearing baggy pants, then you can use this sentence. Tu es trop chou. You are so cute. Tu es trop chou. You are so cute. Oh, you cute. Chou is literally a cabbage. So you are so cabbage. You are so cute. <laughs> tu es superbe. You look great. Tu es superbe. You look great. Well, when your date is coming toward you and your date is wearing their fanciest clothes to impress you, you can say that. <gasps> tu es superbe. Okay. <laughs> Tell me I look great in the comments. <laughs> C'était une soirée géniale. That was a great evening. C'était une soirée géniale. That was a great evening. For when you had a good time with your date and you want to finish on a positive note, you can say that. And hopefully they will see you next time. And that's what they will say if they want to see you next time. Je vais te raccompagner en voiture chez toi. I will drive you home. Je vais te raccompagner en voiture chez toi. I will drive you home. Yeah, that's when things are getting serious. Then you get in the car and then you have to invite the person upstairs and have a coffee. Yeah. Quand est-ce qu'on se revoit? Can I see you again? Quand est-ce qu'on se revoit? Can I see you again? No, you cannot. That's fact. Yeah, if you both had a good date, hopefully you can see each other again. Unless you were the only one having a good date. Then no, you won't see them. Ever. Again. No. On va ailleurs? Shall we go somewhere else? On va ailleurs? Shall we go somewhere else? So you want to be all alone in the dark? Doing lovey-dovey stuff. <laughs> yeah, if the place is too crowded for you and you want a bit more of intimacy, you can offer your dad to go someplace else and go take a walk into a park. Qu'est-ce que tu penses de cet endroit? What do you think of this place? Qu'est-ce que tu penses de cet endroit? What do you think of this place? Yeah, what do you think of this place? I think it's pretty green. That, that's my date place. So tell me what you think of this place in the comments. Should we decorate a bit? So what are your date sentences to invite someone? If you have an original way, let me know in the comments. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, I'm Lia, and this is top 10 phrases your parents always say. Let's go. That's the best I could come up with. Soyez prudent. Be careful. That's plural, so that would be if you're with your brother, because your parents wouldn't address you politely. So they would say, if it's singular, Sois prudent. Be careful. When I would go to my friends, they would tell me that and say, Yeah, you call me when you arrive. And I wouldn't, because that's not be ridiculous. Like, I would take my bike and go to my friends. Or walk there. Mm. Yeah, hey, tell me when you arrive. Yeah, I arrived well, I didn't die. Silence. Be quiet. When you are being too noisy. Or when you play your music too loud. Or when you are being an idiot. On, or when you're not behaving 
when you are different. Being at your parents' friends with your parents was just so boring. Uh, so I would play with the cutlery and they would tell me to be quiet. Sois sage. Behave. Yeah. Behave. Be quiet. Bye. <laughs> Jesus. Behave, young girl. Yeah. Oh, behave. Leave a comment if you get the reference. Oh, behave. You will have to read the comment to know. Fais tes devoirs. Do your homework. You, you shouldn't need your parents to tell you that. You should do your homeworks on your own, no? Do I need to tell you about that? Do your French homework? Stop watching and go do it now. Nah, you can stay. You can go do your homework when you're done watching me. <laughs> I am your homework now. <laughs> I'm your French homework. You have to watch. Vaoli, go to bed. Same as with your homework. Don't have your parents scream at you stuff like this. Just go to bed. Then you can fake it and you can be under the blankie and read a book or listen to stuff. You, you just have to make them believe you're going to bed. He has nice tips. Je vais compter jusqu'à trois. I'm going to count to three. That's when you are not eating your soup or when you are being annoying. You're going, one, two, two and a half, two and three quarters, and then you get grounded. I don't know. I never got to three with them. Arrête. Stop. Again, what kind of parents are those? Don't you have nice parents somewhere? Stop. Hammer time. <laughs> what would that be in French? Arrête. Le temps du marteau. <laughs> doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> but hey, who cares? Oh yeah, when, when you want to be a brat and your parents tell you that one word, arrête, it also sounds like a fish bone. Arrête, so une arrête de poisson is a fish bone. And so we would say, y a pas d'arrête dans le beefsteak. There is no fish bone in the steak. Which doesn't mean much, but just when you want to be a brat and annoy your parents, you would say that. Something to annoy people with. Qu'est-ce que tu as dit? What did you say? So if you do the arrête stuff with just so, then maybe your parents will ask you this. What did you just say? You're making fun of me, huh? You're making fun of me? No. So what did you say? Je ne plaisante pas. I'm not kidding. I will count to three and I'm not kidding. I don't know, I never argue with my parents so much that they would have to tell me stuff like this. I would just tell them, shut up, I'm going to my room. Yeah, because they were always arguing between them and throwing plates at each other. So I would go to my room anyway to avoid them. I'm not kidding! Je ne plaisante pas, tu ne dois pas manger le dernier cookie. You shall not eat the last cookie, I'm not kidding! It's mine. Sorry. <laughs> it's mine! It's my cookie! It's my cookie! <laughs> <laughs> Éteins la télévision immédiatement. Turn the TV off now. They told me that when I was 12 and I was watching the X-File too much. And the X-File is a show for adults, so it was forbidden so for people under 12, but I would watch it anyway. And it would run really late and I would have school the next day. So if they caught me watching the X-File, they would say that. Turn off the TV and go to bed. But I like the X-Files. No, it doesn't look as good anymore. But at the time it was. I am Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready to go to France? Let's talk about the top 10 tourist attractions in France. Let's go to France. Tour Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. Tour Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. Tour Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. La Tour Eiffel est magnifique. The Eiffel Tower is magnificent. Especially at night when they light up all the lights and you go like shh. And that's pretty. Or for New Year, on when there is special events, they light it up with special colors. Musée du Louvre. Musée du Louvre. Louvre Museum. Musée du Louvre. The Louvre Museum. In case you were wondering, what's the English word for it, I guess. Ma section préférée au Musée du Louvre est l'Egyptologie. My favorite part in the Louvre Museum is Egyptology. Hey, it's true, I love that part. And... 
They also have the famous uh, Joconde painting. They have permanent exhibitions and also temporary ones. So if you've been there already, you can go again because there is surely something new to see. Parc du Château de Versailles. Gardens of Versailles. Parc du Château de Versailles. Gardens of Versailles. Everything is in Paris for now. You know, France is not just Paris, right? Le meilleur moment pour visiter le parc du château de Versailles est en été. The best time to visit the gardens of Versailles is in summer. Because if you go in spring, then everything is blooming and you get all the allergies at once. Bad. And summer is nice and they have fountains, so maybe the fountains are growing. So yeah, summer would be a good time for that. Basilique du Sacré-Cœur de Montmartre. Basilique du Sacré-Cœur of Montmartre. Basilique du Sacré-Cœur de Montmartre. J'ai visité la Basilique du Sacré-Cœur de Montmartre avec mes amis. I visited the Basilique of Sacré-Cœur of Montmartre with my friends. It's in a place where it's surrounded by artisty people. So you can get your portrait done or your caricature. And it's on top of a hill. So if you go there, well, during the day, but personally, I like night better. You can see the city lighting up and it's really nice. La cathédrale de Notre-Dame de Paris. Notre-Dame de Paris. La cathédrale de Notre-Dame de Paris. Still in Paris, hein? Someone is biased, hein? On peut écouter l'orgue à la cathédrale de Notre-Dame de Paris le dimanche. You can listen to the organ at Notre-Dame Cathedral on Sundays. Yeah, you can. Maybe it's the first Sunday of the month only, I'm not even sure. I don't know. It seems that the guy playing the organ there was specially selected and has been here for years now. Marché aux puces de Saint-Ouen. Flea market of Saint-Ouen. Marché aux puces de Saint-Ouen. Flea market of Saint-Ouen. Il a acheté beaucoup de choses au marché aux puces de Saint-Ouen. He bought many things at the flea market of Saint-Ouen. Flea markets are nice if you want to find some oldies. And they have a bit of everything. And it's nice to just walk around and look at stuff, even if you're not in Tending to buy. You can see all gnomes or dog figurines for your garden. <laughs> That's in every flea market ever. And you can also find some nice comics and maybe some vintage stuff. They even sell clothes usually. Really a bit of everything. Flea market is a lot of second hand stuff, so maybe you can find something nice for cheap. Armada de Rouen. Rouen Armada. Armada de Rouen. Rouen's Armada. L'armada de Rouen est très populaire. The armada of Rouen is very popular. So popular, I have no idea what that is. Armada is about boats, so if you're into ships, you can go and visit that and you will find a magnificent fleet of ship stuff. You go there and you tell me what you found. Centre Georges Pompidou. Pompidou Center. Centre Georges Pompidou. Pompidou Center. Je suis allé voir l'exposition d'art au centre Georges Pompidou. I went to see an art exhibition at the Pompidou Center. I think I've been there with my art class when we went to Paris. Because everything's in Paris. So Georges Pompidou was a French president and before that a prime minister. And we gave his name to the art center and the art center is very colorful. With art inside and art outside. I think last time I went there was a flower pot, a giant flower pot outside. Art. Disneyland Paris. Disneyland Paris. Disneyland Paris. Disneyland Paris. Youhoo! I like it there. L'enfant avait hâte pour son prochain voyage à Disneyland. The child was looking forward to his upcoming trip to Disneyland. Everyone is looking forward to their next trip to Disneyland. Come on, even adults. And the rides, all the rides. And the queuing, all the queuing. I like Space Mountain. Which one is your favorite ride? Let me know. Forêt de Fontainebleau. Forest of Fontainebleau. Forêt de Fontainebleau. La forêt de Fontainebleau est grande. The forest of Fontainebleau is big. Never been there, but I will trust you on that. It's a forest! Bye bye! Enjoy your trip! La 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 la! Oui, oui, Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the hat. So, are you ready to travel to France? If so, don't forget to prepare well. I'm Lia, and this is top 10 ways to prepare for your travel. Let's go. Choisir sa destination. To choose one's destination. 
Je dois choisir ma destination ce mois-ci. I have to choose my destination this month. What would be your favorite destination? Well, it would be France, obviously. But if you have another one, let me know in the comments. I always choose Japan. Or oh, Singapore. Singapore is great. Acheter un guide touristique. To buy a guidebook. My favorite is Lonely Planet or the Michelin Guide. Mon ami achète toujours des guides touristiques. My friend always buys guidebooks. I usually buy some too, or check out on the internet, because I want the cheap deal and the good food inside. Sometimes we even get discount from the guidebook, and you also get some survival phrases. So try it. Economiser de l'argent, to save money. Il économise de l'argent depuis 5 ans. He has been saving money for 5 years. What kind of travel is he planning to do? <laughs> well, the more you save, the more you can spend on your travel. So if you really want to go all out and see all the things and eat all the stuff, just save for a while and then you can enjoy it a lot. Rechercher les prix. To research the costs. Je n'ai pas encore recherché les prix. I haven't researched the costs yet. You should research the costs first and then start saving because you know how much you need then. Réserver un vol. To book a flight. Quand réserverons-nous notre vol? When will we book our flight? As soon as possible. Seriously, because it's cheaper. Ideally six months in advance. And I have a point card for every airline I ever went on. This way I can accumulate it with, I don't know, everything, just in case. J just get the card because it's free and Maybe they treat you better and you have higher chances of being upgraded. Or so I heard. Demander des congés. Request vacation time. Il demande toujours des congés au dernier moment. He always requests vacation time at the last moment. Don't forget to do this way in advance because your colleagues need to adjust for your time out. I requested mine way in advance and, you know, people still ask me for stuff when I'm on holiday. Leah, this Sunday needs to be done. <laughs> Réserver un hébergement. To book accommodation. Il passe toujours par un site internet pour réserver un hébergement. They always book accommodation through a website. Because it's pretty convenient and if you don't know the language, it can be quite tricky to reserve your accommodation at the accommodation place. But it's easier to compare prices. Don't forget to book also way in advance when it's a popular season to go. Or else you end up in a way too expensive place or under a bridge. And we don't like being under a bridge. Renouveler son passeport. To renew one's passport. Je dois bientôt renouveler mon passeport. I need to renew my passport soon. Don't forget to also do this way in advance because it can take one or two months to get all your paperwork done and you don't want to miss your trip just because your passport is expired. That would be sad. Faire ses valises. To pack. Vous n'avez pas encore fait vos valises? You haven't packed yet? I always pack at the last minute because that's one of my superpowers. If you are not good at packing, watch a few packing tip videos online. It's really useful and then you can bring only one suitcase instead of three. Obtenir un visa. To get a visa. J'ai obtenu un visa de 5 ans. I got a 5 year visa. Be sure to also check the country you are going to to see if you need a visa because you don't want to get there and be rejected because you forgot to fill some paper. And if you don't need a visa, be sure to check the number of days you are allowed to stay without a visa. So what's the one place you want to travel to or what are your best travel tips for preparation? Leave it to me in the comments and we will see you next time. Have a safe flight. Is everyone feeling in love? <laughs> I'm Leah and here are our 10 most romantic ideas for a date. Let's go on a date together. Dîner aux chandelles. Candlelit dinner. Dîner aux chandelles. Candlelit dinner. J'ai préparé un dîner aux chandelles pour notre anniversaire de mariage. I prepared a candlelit dinner for our wedding anniversary. That's a romantic thing to do. And then you put tiny paper art, hearts, and you put dim lights, everything is nice, a nice bottle of wine or champagne. That's cute. Faire une longue promenade. 
to go for a long walk. Faire une longue promenade, to go for a long walk. Nous avons fait une longue promenade après le déjeuner. We went for a long walk after lunch. Yeah, I should do that too after lunch. You can go to a nice park and watch the trees and the flowers and just hold hands in the park and break everything. <laughs> Allez faire du bowling. To go bowling. Allez faire du bowling. To go bowling. Nous sommes allés faire du bowling pour mon anniversaire. We went bowling for my birthday. If a guy is asking you to go bowling on a date, it's because he wants to look at your butt when you clumsily throw the ball. So bowling is a common French idea of a date. So a lot of people do that apparently. So yeah, if you are the one inviting for the date, you should make a big score and show how strong you are. And if you are the one invited or if you want to act all cute, you should be a bit clumsy and say, Can you help me? I don't know how to hold the ball properly. It's so heavy. And yeah, be a bit clumsy. That's cute. The best is if you look a bit clumsy, but then you beat your date. And that's the fun part. And you say, ah -ha! and they will love you even more. Aller à l'aquarium. To go to the aquarium. Aller à l'aquarium. To go to the aquarium. Elle n'est jamais allée à l'aquarium. She has never been to the aquarium. Aquarium are nice for a date because it's a bit dark and you see all the pretty fishes swimming around. It's really relaxing and cozy and intimate. So that's a good idea. Hey, I can be positive sometimes. Aller à l'opéra. To go to the opera. Aller à l'opéra. To go to the opera. Mes grands-parents adorent aller à l'opéra. My grandparents love going to the opera. That's your grandparents' date. If you want to go for a date, you can feel sophisticated and smart. Faire un picnic. To have a picnic. Faire un picnic. To have a picnic. Je vais faire un picnic au parc avec mes amis le mois prochain. I will have a picnic at the park with my friends next month. You have homemade lunch, maybe nice sandwiches, some glasses of maybe sparkly wine. That's fancy for a picnic and that's kind of nice. And you just enjoy the nature together. Dîner et voir un film. To have dinner and see a movie. Dîner et voir un film. To have dinner and see a movie. Hier soir, nous avons dîné et vu un film. Yesterday evening, we had dinner and saw a movie. That's also a common date practice where you go to a nice restaurant and then you make sure to finish on time and go to a late, late viewing at the cinema. Then you're all cozy and warm and... You fall a bit asleep because it's dark and the food was nice. And then you can rest on the shoulder of your date like this. Like, ah. Prendre un ferry. To take a ferry ride. Prendre un ferry. To take a ferry ride. Nous avons pris le ferry d'Irlande en Écosse. We took a ferry ride from Ireland to Scotland. If you have a ferry available, it can be a nice date opportunity. You're on the sea, you can see the infinite water in front of you, feel the breeze, imitate the titanic pose, or not. And some ferries are so big they even have casino and movie theaters inside, so that can complete your date. Casino. Marcher sur la plage. To walk on the beach. Marcher sur la plage. To walk on the beach. J'aime marcher sur la plage. I like to walk on the beach. I like that too. And then you can hold hands again and draw messages in the sand, make tiny hearts, just sit and look at the ocean, feel the breeze again. Aller au musée. To go to the museum. Aller au musée. Go to the museum. If you want to feel smart and the opera wasn't enough, you can go to the museum, like before the opera. Il aime aller au musée pendant des heures. He likes going to the museum for hours. And you can sit together and stare at romantic paintings of couple in the grass. And it goes for a quiet date and a smart one. And then you feel nice about yourself and you can talk about your feelings while looking at all the art. And it's the end. Tell me what's your fun idea for a date in the comments. And we will see you next time. Bye. I hope we will see you again after the date. Bye everyone! Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 
10 phrases to know when having a baby. Let's begin. Allaiter, to breastfeed. Allaiter, to breastfeed. Ma mère allait mon petit frère. My mom breastfeeds my little brother. I'm not a mother, I'm not a mom, but I believe to, when you breastfeed a kid, it must be like maybe under two, I believe so, but I am not really sure. <laughs> I'm not a mother, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Changer une couche. To change a diaper. Changer une couche. To change a diaper. Je n'aime pas changer les couches des bébés. I don't like changing baby diapers. I can understand because that smells really bad. Mettre un bavoir. To put on a bib. Mettre un bavoir. To put on a bib. Tu sais comment mettre un bavoir? Do you know how to put on a bib? Changer de vêtements. To change clothes. Changer de vêtements. To change clothes. Elle change de vêtements trois fois par jour. She changes clothes three times a day. I think that's a lot, but yeah, it can happen. Chanter une berceuse. To sing a lullaby. Chanter une berceuse. To sing a lullaby. Il chante une berceuse à son bébé. He sings a lullaby to his baby. Faire une sieste. To take a nap. Faire une sieste. To take a nap. Si je le pouvais, je ferais une sieste tous les jours. If I could, I would take a nap every day. Yeah, I would do too. I don't have time for that, unfortunately. Acheter un siège auto. To buy a car seat. Acheter un siège auto. To buy a car seat. Je dois acheter un nouveau siège auto. I need to buy a new car seat. Pousser une poussette. To push a strutter. Pousser une poussette. To push a strutter. Notre fille pousse la poussette de sa poupée tous les jours. Our daughter pushes her doll strutter every day. Lire un livre. To read a book. Lire un livre. To read a book. C'est agréable de lire un livre dans le jardin quand il fait bon dehors. It is pleasant to sit in the garden and read a book when the weather is nice outside. Yeah, I love it too. Faire de la nourriture pour bébé. To make baby food. Faire de la nourriture pour bébé. To make baby food. Il ne sait pas comment faire de la nourriture pour bébé. He doesn't know how to make baby food. Me neither, to be honest. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 phrases tourists should never use. Let's begin. C'est dégoûtant. That's disgusting. C'est dégoûtant. That's disgusting. Even if you are not a tourist, you should never use this sentence. Yeah, that's naturally nice to hear. Mon pays est meilleur. My country is better. Mon pays est meilleur. My country is better. This uh, definitely sounds racist, so it's better to avoid it. Je préférerais être chez moi. I'd rather be back home. Je préférerais être chez moi. I'd rather be back home. Even if you like traveling, sometimes you feel like you prefer to be home. However, it's better to keep uh, that thought to yourself. Yeah, that's true. Ta gueule. <laughs> shut up. Ta gueule. Shut up. Never say this to anyone unless it's an intimate friend. Well, a lot of people use that when they argue with other people that they don't know. I have before. Je ne suis pas très intéressé par votre culture. I am not really interested in your culture. Je ne suis pas très intéressé par votre culture. I am not very interested in your culture. 
This is not offensive, but you make a bad impression. <laughs> Je n'aime pas rencontrer de nouvelles personnes. <laughs> I don't like to meet new people. Je n'aime pas rencontrer de nouvelles personnes. I don't like to meet new people. Yeah, being honest is good, but uh, sometimes you may sound rude. And I know what I'm talking about because I am really honest. On n'a qu'à aller manger à McDonald's. Let's just eat at McDonald's. On n'a qu'à aller manger à McDonald's. Let's just eat at McDonald's. French food culture is rich and people are proud of it. So avoid saying such a thing if you don't want to hurt your French friends' feelings. Yeah, but we do love burgers too, actually, so sometimes we go to McDonald's. Je m'en fous. Boring. Je m'en fous. Boring. This is a strong expression and it's not only about boredom, it also means that you couldn't care less. In certain situations, This would be extremely offensive. Mm -mm. Ça a un goût affreux. This tastes awful. Ça a un goût affreux. This tastes awful. If you can avoid saying this, at least try smiling when you say it. Je vais passer la journée à l'hôtel. I am going to spend the day in the hotel. Je vais passer la journée à l'hôtel. I'm going to spend the day at the hotel. People are not likely to get upset if you say this, but you won't look smart. Yeah, why go on a trip if you want to spend your day in the hotel? Useless, right? Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 most common tourist vocabulary. Let's begin. Ticket. Ticket. Ticket, ticket. For example, you can hear Je vais vérifier votre ticket, monsieur. I am going to check your ticket, sir. So this happens a lot when you're in a train. Uh, Somebody is going to come up to you and ask for your ticket. Tourist, tourist. Tourist, tourist. Les touristes français sont bruyants. <laughs> French tourists are noisy. Um, I don't know why you're saying that. Mm -mm, not true. Itinéraire. Itinerary. Itinéraire. Itinerary. Je dois planifier mon itinéraire. I need to plan my itinerary. Yeah, I love to do that myself. Like, I spend maybe two months before of my time to look for stuff. Guide touristique. Guidebook. Guide touristique. Guidebook. C'est recommandé dans le guide touristique. It is recommended in the guidebook. Bus touristique. Tour bus. Bus touristique. Tour bus. Ce bus touristique est plein à craquer. This tour bus is packed. When I visit new uh, cities, I usually use tour buses, like when I went to Chicago, for example. That's pretty cool. You can see, like, sightseeing and stuff like that. Temple. 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 Il y a de très beaux temples au Japon. There are beautiful temples in Japan. I have never been, so I cannot confirm about that, but yeah, maybe. Mosque. Mosque. Mosque, mosque. Il y a une mosquée très célèbre à Istanbul. There is a very famous mosque in Istanbul. Église, church. Église, church. Cette famille va à l'église tous les dimanches. This family goes to church every Sunday. Yes, that is really important. Do it. Too. Cascade. Waterfall. Cascade. Waterfall. Il a pris une jolie cascade en photo. He took a picture of a beautiful waterfall. Yeah, we love to go to the, the Na ah, Niagara Falls. Niagara. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, so <laughs> put it again. 
<laughs> yeah, how do you say? Niagara. Niagara? Yeah. Niagara, but this really? Visite, to tour. Visite, to tour. Ma famille va visiter Rome l'année prochaine. My family will visit Rome next year. I haven't been to Rome, but I have been to Milano and Venezia. Beautiful. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Hi, everyone. Are you ready for summer or for holiday or both? Let's check today what you can do for the summer holiday in France. Let's go. Voyager à l'étranger. To travel abroad. Voyager à l'étranger. To travel abroad. J'adore voyager à l'étranger. I love to travel abroad. Do you love to travel abroad? And have you ever been abroad? So let me in the comment where you've been. Se détendre à la plage. To relax at the beach. Se détendre à la plage. To relax at the beach. Ils se détendent à la plage. They are relaxing at the beach. Don't forget the sunscreen because the sun can get pretty tough. Then you burn and then you'll be shrimp. Apprendre le français avec frenchpod101.com or Apprendre le français avec frenchpod101.com To learn French with frenchpod101.com Apprendre le français avec frenchpod101.com To learn French with frenchpod101.com Nous apprenons le français avec frenchpod101.com tous les jours. We learn French with frenchpod101.com every day. Or if you want to sound French, you can say... Nous apprenons le français avec frenchpod101.com. Yeah, you can also enjoy summer and the holiday to learn something new. Like French. Apprendre à cuisiner français. To learn to cook French food. Apprendre à cuisiner français. To learn to cook French food. Voulez-vous apprendre à cuisiner français? Do you want to learn how to cook French food? So yeah, if you guys are interested, let me know. Maybe we can do a cooking video sometime. Faire un barbecue. To have a barbecue. Faire un barbecue. To have a barbecue. Yummy! <laughs> I like barbecue. Ils ont fait un barbecue la semaine dernière. They had a barbecue last week. Faire la fête toute la nuit. To party all night. Faire la fête toute la nuit. To party all night. Les étudiants aiment faire la fête toute la nuit. Not only the students, come on. Don't drink and drive. Se faire bronzer. To get a tan. Se faire bronzer. To get a tan. Elles se sont fait bronzer cet été. They got a tan this summer. Again, don't forget the sunscreen. Faire de la randonnée. To go hiking. Faire de la randonnée. To go hiking. Nous faisons de la randonnée tous les ans. We hike every year. Travailler à mi-temps. To work a part-time job. Travailler à mi-temps. To work a part-time job. Je travaille à mi-temps. I work a part-time job. S'amuser avec ses amis. To have fun with friends. S'amuser avec ses amis. To have fun with friends. Je m'amuse tous les week-ends avec mes amis. I have fun with my friends every weekend. Come on, you're on holiday. You don't have to do it on the weekend. You can do it all week, every day, for two months. So leave me a comment with your favorite summer activity or your favorite summer video game, because why not? <laughs> no one wants to go out and burn in the sun, am I right? And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to learn 20 words you will need at the beach, because it's summer soon. Let's go. Lunettes de soleil. Sunglasses. Lunettes de soleil. Sunglasses. Des lunettes de soleil pour se protéger du soleil. Sunglasses to protect you from the sun. Because today is so rainy, right? Sunglasses. Plage. Beach. Plage. Beach. Ce weekend, nous irons à la plage. This weekend, we will go to the beach. Nager. Swim. Nager. Swim. J'adore nager dans les vagues. I love to swim in the waves. Soleil. Sun. Soleil. Sun. Le soleil est une étoile. The sun is a star. I'm also a star. Coquillage. Seashell. Coquillage. Seashell. Elle vend des coquillages à la plage. 
She sells seashells by the seashore. Uh -huh. <rire> Maillot de bain. Swimsuit. Maillot de bain. Swimsuit. Je me sens très embarrassée de montrer mon corps en maillot de bain. I feel very insecure showing my body in a swimsuit. <rire> no, I don't. Océan. Ocean. Océan. Ocean. Je préfère la mer à l'océan. I prefer the sea over the ocean. Maître nageur. Lifeguard. Maître nageur. Lifeguard. Mon ami est maître nageur à mi-temps. My friend is a part-time lifeguard. And then you insert the music of that one lifeguard series. And they run like this. I'm a lifeguard. Jet ski. Jet ski. Jet ski. In French, jet ski. Maybe just say it with a French accent. Jet ski. Ils font du jet ski tous les jours. They go jet skiing every day. Like them. Serviette de plage. Beach towel. Serviette de plage. Beach towel. J'ai oublié ma serviette de plage. I forgot my beach towel. I did indeed forget my towel, or else I would have brought one. <coughs> so when you go to the beach, you should have two towels. One for lying down and one for drying yourself. Chaise longue. Beach chair. Chaise longue. Beach chair. Elle lit un livre sur sa chaise longue. She's reading a book on her beach chair. Ah. Uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. Château de sable. Sandcastle. Château de sable. Sandcastle. J'aime faire des châteaux de sable. I like to make sandcastles. You take your bucket, you fill it with wet sand, and you go... And make the Disney castle. And then the waves come in and... And washes everything off and... Sad. Glacière. Cooler. Glacière. Cooler. Je n'ai pas de glacière. I don't have a cooler. Don't forget your cooler at the beach, it's very convenient. Bronzage. Tan. Bronzage. Tan. Leur bronzage est magnifique. Their tan is beautiful. For people like me who don't tan and just burn like a shrimp, good luck, you will never have a beautiful tan. Plonger avec tuba. Snorkeling. Plonger avec tuba. Snorkeling. As-tu déjà fait de la plongée avec tuba? Have you ever been snorkeling? So did you? And where? Tong. Flip-flop. Tong. Flip-flop. Nous portons toujours des tongs en été. We always wear flip-flops in summer. Yeah, everyone wears those in summer around the beach and they are also really cheap and it goes like flap, 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 flap. Crème solaire. Sunscreen. Crème solaire. Sunscreen. La crème solaire est conseillée pour l'exposition au soleil. Sunscreen is recommended for sun exposure. Indeed. Not only for sun, for every day, all the time. Oh my god. Summer war paint. That's how you get ready. <laughs> Bikini. 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 Or as you say in English, Bikini. Son bikini est rouge. Her bikini is red. And then she runs like this with her blonde hair in the wind. Because she's a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. Mer. Si. Mer. Si. Ils vont à la mer tous les étés. They go to the sea every summer. That's what people do. And that's why the sea is so crowded in summer. Sable. Sand. Sable. Sand. Il y a du sable sur la plage. There is sand on the beach. Oh, is there now? <laughs> Mostly in the south. Maybe in the west and north too, but I'm not sure. Mm, you have uh, beaches that are actually made of rocks. So when you walk on them, it's really hard. I don't know why people like it. Try it anyway. It's therapeutic. So I hope you have a nice summer and that these words will help you. And leave me a comment about what you would do in the beach and what you get for your summer. Or if you have a beach at all, because some countries don't. <laughs> anyway, enjoy! Bye-bye! Enjoy your holiday! Hi everyone, I'm Lia, and today we are going to talk about 10 phrases for surviving back to school. Because we need survival for this. Let's go! Sac à dos, backpack. Sac à dos, backpack. Il portait ses livres, crayons et papiers dans son sac à dos. He carried his books, pencils, and papers in his backpack. Yeah, in France you usually have either a backpack 
or just a normal bag when you grow up? People used to complain a lot because of all the books that you have to carry and it gets really, really heavy up to, I think it was sometimes six or seven kilos of books and papers and all your notebooks. So that was painful. Camarade, classmate, camarade, classmate. Son professeur lui a demandé de distribuer le nouveau matériel à ses camarades de classe. His professor asked him to hand out the new material to his classmates. So usually the professor will give material or copies of the new papers to the person that's in the first line of the class, right in front of the desk. And um, this person will have to distribute everything to the rest of the class. If you are part of the lazy ones, sit in the back so you don't have to do this ever. Devoir, homework. Devoir, homework. J'ai des devoirs pour demain. I have homework for tomorrow. How do you do your homework? Do you do them the day right before or even in the corridor before class? Or are you the kind of person who does them way in advance and this way you are peaceful for the rest of the week? Let me know in the comments. Un examen. Exam. Un examen. Exam. Je dois étudier pour mes examens. I must study for my exams. Nah. Who studies, seriously? Badly, bad. So yeah, study for your exam, I swear, is the good way to go. Mm -hmm. Cahier. Notebook. Cahier. Notebook. L'étudiant écrit sur le cahier. The student writes on the notebook. That's where you write. Not on the table. On the notebook. Not in the book. On the notebook. Usually you always start a nice notebook with good resolutions to keep your titles clean and write in that one color for this and that one color for that. And then after a while it goes like when you just have drawing in the margin and you don't care anymore. And then you don't even finish your notebook and then you buy a new one and you do that again. Ah. École. School. École. School. L'école commence à 8h30. School starts at 8.30. Yes, it does. When your professor is not here, or if you get lucky, sometimes you can even start later. And that's nice. Étudier. To study. Étudier. To study. Étudier le français, c'est fun. Studying French is fun. C'est le premier jour de cours. It's the first day of class. C'est le premier jour de cours. It's the first day of class. First day is a fun day. Because you get your schedule. You get to meet your new teachers and they only talk about what you're going to do and you don't have to study or take notes already, so that's nice. You reunite with your friends. You decide on the sitting positions. Close to the radiator in the back of the class. It's the comfy place in winter. Nous sommes dans la même classe. We are in the same class. Nous sommes dans la même classe. We are in the same class. Nous sommes dans la même classe! And you go like, yeah, yeah. So at the beginning of the year, Mm, there were two different versions. Either you would have to check on the board where your name was, and then you check for your friends and hope you are together again, because please, or else the year is going to be lame. Or they call you at the beginning in the class of quatrième. And then they will call all your name, and so you go and stand here and wait for your friends to come. And the list goes and goes and your friend is not coming and now your friend's name is not coming up at all and then you get scared. <laughs> and then uh, if your friend's name gets called and you go like, yeah! And that's nice. As-tu fini tes devoirs? Did you finish your homework? As-tu fini tes devoirs? Did you finish your homework? Hmm. Don't forget to do your homework instead of watching YouTube videos. Well, it's French, so it's studying, but do also your other homeworks, okay? The end. So I hope you will survive back to school and I hope you get a nice class with your nice friends and not too much trouble. I'm curious about what you guys are studying for learning French. I did drawings. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Welcome back, everyone. Today we are going to talk about autumn and the 10 must-know autumn vocabulary. Pull, sweater. Pull, sweater. As-tu déjà essayé ce pull adorable? Have you already tried on this lovely sweater? When I mean, we need to be all warm and nice. No, I'm all big. <laughs> but it's comfy. Pluvieux. Rainy. Pluvieux. Rainy. 
Je dois distribuer les journaux pendant les jours pluvieux et venteux. I have to deliver newspapers on rainy days and windy days. <coughs> Terrible thing. I'm sorry if you have to, it's really painful. And then your clothes get all wet and your hair is messed up. Venteux. Windy. Venteux. Windy. Demain, il fera froid et venteux, donc porte une écharpe. Tomorrow will be cold and windy, so wear a scarf. Indeed, it can get really windy in autumn, especially in the south part of France, close to Spain. It gets really strong wind. It's so strong, it gives you a headache, and it's known to drive people crazy. And you can get sick pretty easily, so scarves are good. Frais. Cool. Frais. Cool. Il fait chaud pendant la journée, mais frais la nuit. It's hot during the day, but cool at night. It is indeed. Autumn. 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 L'automne commence fin septembre. Autumn begins at the end of September. On the 21st of September. It's autumn. And then the leaves get nice. Marron. Chestnut. Marron. Chestnut. Manger un pancake avec de la crème de marron est délicieux. Eating a pancake with chestnut cream is delicious. Yeah, chestnut cream comes in a really tiny can and it's really dark and sticky and sweet. Chemise à manches longues. Long sleeved shirt. Chemise à manches longues. Long sleeved shirt. C'est bien de porter des chemises à manches longues quand il fait froid. Long sleeved shirt are good for cold weather. Yeah. This and the coat. And a bit more. And another pullover. Manteau. Coat. Manteau. Coat. Mets ton manteau, tu vas attraper un rhume. Put on your coat, you're going to catch a cold. Mm -hmm. Are we warm yet? <laughs> yeah, that's my autumn fashion, I guess. With a, a light coat and a pullover, and then you are so ready to go through autumn. Froid, cold. Froid, cold. Je grelotte, j'ai froid. I'm shivering, I'm cold. <coughs> Maybe you should have worn a warmer coat. Feuille, leaf. Feuille, leaf. Cet arbre a beaucoup de feuilles. This tree has many leaves. Until it's winter and then it doesn't have any anymore. Sad. <laughs> the leaves get so beautiful in autumn with all the colors. So that's where our words for autumn and let me know in the comment maybe it's your favorite season and maybe you have more word for it and we'll see you next time bye bye leaves leaves hi everyone i am lindsay from frenchpod101.com and in this video we'll be talking about 10 phrases to help you in an emergency let's begin la police s'il vous plaît call the police please Use this phrase when you need someone to call the police. In France, we call 17. They should be called if there is a need of police intervention. For example, an accident on a public highway, public disorder, aggression, a robbery, a burglary, etc. Avez-vous de la fièvre? Do you have a fever? Use this phrase when you want to check someone's temperature. Generally, when seeing this sentence, you place your hand on the person's forehead to feel if it's warm. Oh! J'ai perdu mon passeport. I lost my passport. Use this phrase when, unfortunately for yourself, you lose your passport. In this situation, find and contact the nearest embassy or consulate from your country. Ouf. Je pense que j'ai mangé quelque chose de mauvais. I think I ate something bad. Use this phrase when you are not feeling very well due to intestinal discomfort and you want something to help the pain. J'ai besoin d'un médecin. I need a doctor. Use this phrase when you are not feeling very well. If you are sick, you must see a doctor. Je ne retrouve pas le chemin jusqu'à mon hôtel. I can't find a way back to my hotel. Use this phrase when you are lost and can't go back to your hotel. In this situation, you can try to find a reputable store. 
explain your situation to one of the employees and they will maybe help you. An offline map app is also useful. Y a-t-il une pharmacie dans le coin? Is there a pharmacy nearby? Use this phrase when you need to find a pharmacy without going too far. Do not hesitate to ask a shopkeeper around you. They might know better than the average person on the street. Pourriez-vous m'aider? Can you help me? Use this phrase when you need assistance and you want to ask someone. You can add excusez-moi, excuse me, at the beginning of the sentence to be more polite. Je suis perdu. I am lost. Use this phrase when you are lost. As I already said, do not hesitate to ask to someone like a storekeeper or a police officer to help you. J'ai besoin d'une ambulance. I need an ambulance. Use this phrase when you need an ambulance to come. Usually you can call 112, the European emergency number, even if you don't speak French. Okay, that's all for the 10 phrases to help you in an emergency. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about how to curse like a French native speaker. Ringard, that means uncool. So for example, if you see a guy that is like dressed not really nice, uh, you don't like his style, you can say, oh mon dieu, ce gars là c'est un ringard, which means, oh my gosh, this guy is such an uncool person. Fou, crazy. If you meet a guy, I don't know, he, you meet a guy for the first time and he invites you to, um, to, to take a trip to Paris, you can say, oh my gosh, that is crazy. Oh mon dieu, c'est fou. Effrayant, frightening. If you watch a horror movie, you're kind of scared, right? So you can say, c'est effrayant. That means it's frightening. Bet. Dumb. <laughs> that is not really nice to say to a person, but if, yeah, I mean, if you, if you meet a person and, I don't know, he just says crazy stuff to you or that don't make sense at all, you can say, cette personne est vraiment bête. That means this person is really dumb. Imbécile. Fool. <laughs> Um, if you meet a person, once again, I'm going to use a guy. Uh, if you meet a guy and it just, it just plays stupid, you can say, oh, cette personne est vraiment un imbécile. That means this person is really a fool. Connard, jerk. So that's uh, really an insult right here. Um, for example, if you're in a car and somebody just like passed right in front of you, you're going to scream, Kona! That means jerk. Nul, lame. Uh, sometimes, you know, you get really excited and for a plane, uh, a plan that you have with your friends and the plan just don't, doesn't happen. So you're going to say, c'est nul. That means it's lame. Caspier, pain in the neck. So sometimes when, uh, when, when you're kind of angry at somebody, uh, you can say, oh mon dieu, cette personne est vraiment casse-pied. That means, oh my gosh, this person is really a pain in the neck. Mince, shoot. Sometimes you have a date and you're not on time. So you check your watch and you're like, oh mince, oh shoot. Ferme-la, shut up. So that is a really mean thing to say, but for example, if a person is talking too much and you don't want to listen to this person, you say ferme-la, shut up, and see you next time. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Yo. I hope everything is okay. Hi everyone, this week we are going to see 10 ways on how to save the planet. Let's go. Recycler. To recycle. Recycler. To recycle. Je recycle un maximum. I recycle as much as I can. Yeah. In France, you actually have a bunch of different colored uh, trash cans. There is a green one for everything. 
green <laughs> and you have the gray one I think it really depends on where you are living for the regular trash and then more plastic or recycled trash and so you put your things inside and different day of the week they go and pick it up Benevol volunteer Benevol volunteer Je suis bénévole dans une association caricative I'm a volunteer at a charity organization. That's the same in every country. I think you can be volunteering in two places. <coughs> we should have a little I'm sick stamp in the corner. This is going to be fun. Protéger, to protect. Protéger, to protect. Dans les films, les super-héros protègent tout le monde. In movies, superheroes protect everyone. Or do they? Unless you're Deadpool and then you only protect yourself. Nah, he's a cool guy. Mm. Or you can protect the environment. Protéger l'environnement. Réutiliser. To reuse. Réutiliser. To reuse. Je réutilise mes sacs de course. I reuse my shopping bags. I do indeed. In France, when you have to go shopping, you need to bring your own bags because plastic bags have been banned or they are not given away to you freely. So you have to bring your own or else you have to buy them. And <coughs> Réduire les déchets. To reduce trash. Réduire les déchets. To reduce trash. Comment réduisez-vous les déchets? How do you reduce trash? So yeah, tell me in the comment how you reduce trash. Respecter l'environnement. To care for the environment. Respecter l'environnement. To care for the environment. Il est important de respecter l'environnement. It's important to care for the environment. Did I ask people to... Leave me a comment on how you reduce trash and protect the environment. Or what are your way of saving the planet? Tell me down there. My favorite one is to walk instead of using a car. I'd rather walk than use a car. I'm dangerous when driving a car. Utiliser des produits écologiques. To use eco-friendly products. Utiliser des produits écologiques. To use eco-friendly products. Nous utilisons des produits écologiques. We use eco-friendly products. Usually they are made locally. In the area you live in, there will be this one farmer and this one guy who has cows and make milk. And you can use their product because it's more respectful of the environment and everything. It's also tastier. Actually, the other day I was going around and I bought some sausages and some cheese <laughs> because I'm French right and cheese is what I do ah it's so smelly mm. hashtag stereotype hashtag so French faire du vélo to cycle faire du vélo to cycle il adore faire du vélo he loves cycling we do have special paths for bikes in France, so they don't go into the traffic and are not hit by cars. Mm, so it's really easy to take a bike, go around. There are even places where we'll rent them for cheap pretty easily. Like there will be a place with a bunch of bikes. You just put some money in, you take, you get a number, you take the bike, and then you just bring it back. Type your number in and poof, done. No trouble and you get a nice cycling experience to visit around. Faire du compost, to compost. Faire du compost, to compost. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. Let's find out. Mm. Je ne connais pas beaucoup de personnes qui font du compost. I don't know many people who compost. Well, I do because in here you kind of have to. And here is my compost bag. You can see my breakfast and my dinner yesterday and some eggs mm. smelly 
Maybe there are some flies in here too. Mm. Faire les courses en ligne. Shop online. Faire ses courses en ligne. To shop online. Faire des courses en ligne est très pratique. Online shopping is very convenient. It is. You don't spend hours in the big grocery stores and that's really nice and you don't have to interact with everyone. <laughs> Um, you can easily order online for many grocery stores in France. Doesn't have to be Amazon or buy only electronics. You can do it for your regular groceries. You get a number in your email, you go there, you just type in the number, get your groceries and whoo! Yes, convenient in French. And that's about it for today. So thank you for watching and leave me a comment to tell me how you take care of the planet. And if you have many, if you have other tips, yeah, I will read them too. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Mm. I should be down and yeah, and you give me a small scene. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPot101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about how to agree in French like a boss. Let's begin. Oui, tu as raison. Yes, you are right. So sometimes, if you're like me, you like to disagree with people. Um, so, but sometimes you gotta say, oui, tu as raison. Yes, you are right to agree with this person. Je suis entièrement d'accord avec vous. I couldn't agree with you more. So this is more of a formal expression. You won't use that in your everyday life. I mean, with your friends, you will use that with a person that is that has, for example, more power um, to, for example, agree with what they're saying to you, you will say, je suis entièrement d'accord avec vous. I couldn't agree with you more. C'est exactement ce que je ressens. That's exactly how I feel. So this can be used in many situations. Let's say your boyfriend tells you, I love you. You will say, c'est exactement ce que je ressens. That's exactly how I feel. Exactement. Exactly. If a person tells you, hey, what did you think of the English test yesterday? It was super hard. You can say exactement, exactly, if you feel the same way. Aucun doute là-dessus. No doubt about it. So for example, if a person tells you, hey, I'm pretty sure you nailed that test and you know that you nailed it. You're going to say, aucun doute là-dessus, no doubt about it. Ce n'est pas faux. You have a point there. For example, if a person tells you, hey, if you don't get a good grade in biology, you can still make it up with physics. And you can say, ce n'est pas faux. You have a point there. J'allais le dire. I was just going to say that. If a person tells you, for example, um, hey, let's go to the beach today, and you think the same thing at the same time, you can say, j'allais le dire. I was just going to say that. Je crois que oui. I guess so. Sometimes when you're not really sure, for example, if a person asks you, hey, do you think the metro is over there? You can say, je crois que oui. I guess so, because you're not that sure. Eh bien, je ne suis pas sûre. Well, I am not sure. If a person asks you a question like, hey, do you think tomorrow we're going to have a test in math? And you're not really sure, you're going to say, eh bien, je ne suis pas sûre. Well, I am not sure. Je ne suis pas en désaccord avec vous. I don't disagree with you. So that's kind of a formal way if, for example, a person tells you, huh, oh, this uh, man is uh, really, really attractive, you can say, je ne suis pas en désaccord avec vous. I don't disagree with you. See you next time. Au revoir. Hi, everyone. I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about 10 words you need to know at the airport. Let's go. The first word is terminal. 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 For example, you can say l'avion va aller au terminal afin que nous puissions sortir. 
This means the plane is going to pull into the terminal so we can exit. Afin que means in order to, or so that. It indicates a goal or a finality and it requires a subjunctive tense. Sorti des bagages. Sorti des bagages. This means luggage pickup. As you can see, in French, we don't have an equivalent for luggage pickup. You can use similar expressions such as sortie des bagages or point de récupération pour bagages. For example, you can say je vais à la sortie des bagages pour récupérer ma valise, which means I am going to the luggage pickup to get my suitcase back. Billet d'avion. Billet d'avion. This means plane ticket. Acheter comes from the verb acheter, to buy, and it is conjugated with passé composé. Passé composé can be translated with the present perfect or the simple past tense in English. We use it to indicate that an action in the past has been completed. For example, you can say, j'ai acheté mon billet d'avion en ligne, which means I purchased my plane ticket online. Vol. Vol. This means flight. Vol is a word that can mean theft or flight. Of course, you will understand the meaning depending on the situation. For example, you can say, Il a raté son vol car il est parti trop tard, which means he missed his flight because he left too late. The next word is embarquer. Embarquer. This means board. In French, when you get on a plane or a boat, you use the word embarquer but don't use it when talking about a car or a train. For example, you can say j'embarque dans l'avion, which means I get on the plane. The next word is porte d'embarquement. Porte d'embarquement. This means boarding gate. For example, la porte d'embarquement, c'est où tu embarques dans l'avion, means the boarding gate is where you board in the plane. In this sentence, we have two words which seem similar. Embarquement and embarquer. Embarquement is a noun that means boarding and embarquer is the verb that means to board. Their meaning is pretty similar too. Retarder. Retarder. This means delayed. For example, you can say le vol est retardé à cause de la tempête de neige. The flight is delayed because of the snowstorm. À cause de is a French prepositional phrase that means because of or due to. It has a negative meaning, something like it is because of you or it is your fault. Décoller. Décoller. This means take off. You can say l'avion décollera dans 20 minutes, which means the plane will take off in 20 minutes. This sentence uses the future tense with the verb décoller, to take off. As in English, the future tense implies that something has not yet happened, but will happen. Atterrir. Atterrir. This means land. For example, you can say l'avion a atterri à l'aéroport à 10 heures, which means the plane landed at the airport at 10 o'clock. It is very important to see the difference between a and a in French. A is a verb and is the third form of the French verb avoir to have, while a isn't a verb, it's a preposition and you'll find it after a conjugated verb. Réservation. Réservation. This means reservation. Here's an example using this word. Avez-vous une réservation? This means do you have a reservation? Avez-vous is a basic and convenient way to start a question. Avez is a present tense conjugation of the verb avoir, which means to have. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about top 10 life events you should be able to talk about in French. Let's begin. Naissance. Naissance. Birth. Quel is an interrogative adjective used in question to mean which or that. It has to agree with the noun that it precedes. With a feminine singular noun, it becomes quel. For example, that de naissance is feminine. That's why you have to use quel. For example, you can say quel est votre date de naissance, s'il vous plaît. This means could you give me your date of birth, please. Être diplômé. Être diplômé. This means graduate. Graduation is an important goal in many people's life. For example, you can say 
Après avoir été diplômée, je voyagerai un an partout dans le monde. Which means after I graduate, I will travel the world for one year. Avoir un travail. Avoir un travail. This means get a job. For example, you can say, j'ai eu mon premier travail à 18 ans. Which means I got my first job when I was 18. The sentence uses the past tense passé composé. The passé composé is a compound past tense that consists of two elements. The present tense of an auxiliary or helping verb and a past participle. Most verbs use the helping verb avoir. However, some use être. Se fiancer. Se fiancer. This means to get engaged. For example, you can say, tu es fiancé. Félicitations. Which means, are you engaged? Congratulations. Fiancé is an adjective which means engaged. If the subject is feminine, it's fiancé. The next event is mariage. Mariage. This means wedding. For example, il y a beaucoup de mariages en juin parce que certaines personnes pensent que c'est un mois porte-bonheur pour l'amour. This means there are a large number of weddings in June as some think it's a lucky month for love. Parce que introduces a cause. It simply translates to English as because. Parce que can also start a sentence. The next event is acheter une maison. Acheter une maison. This means buy a house. For example, j'achèterais une maison si j'avais plus d'argent means I would buy a house if I had more money. This sentence uses the conditional tense with acheter. The conditional is used to express what will happen given certain events or actions. Anniversaire de mariage. Anniversaire de mariage. This means anniversary. For example, pour un 25e anniversaire de mariage, on offre généralement de l'argent. Means silver is the traditional gift for the 25th wedding anniversary. In France, as well as in some other countries, the names of some anniversaries provide guidance for appropriate or traditional gifts for the spouses to give each other. For example, an eight-year anniversary is Nos de Coquelicot, Poppy Wedding. Prendre sa retraite. Prendre sa retraite. Retire. You can say, mon grand-père a pris sa retraite à l'âge de 60 ans, which means my grandfather retired when he was 60. The retirement age is around 65 in France. It also depends on how many years you've been working. Voyager. Voyager. Travel. For example, you can say, je rêve de voyager aux quatre coins du monde, which means I'm dreaming of traveling all around the world. Aux quatre coins du monde is an expression, literally it means to the four corners of the earth, and can be translated as all around the world. The next event is funérail. Funérail. Funeral. You can say les funérailles sont un moment de deuil et de souvenir, which means a funeral is a time to grieve and remember. Actually, funérail is a formal word, and usually French people use the noun enterrement, which literally means burial. Okay, that's all for this lesson. Which event do you like the most? Leave us a comment letting us know, and we'll see you next time. A bientôt! Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 school subjects. Let's get into it. The first subject is art. 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 French students take art lessons in middle school. It is called art, art plastique because students are engaged in artistic practices or activities. You could say, j'ai du mal à comprendre l'art contemporain, which means it's hard for me to understand modern art. Histoire. History. Histoire. This means history. Did you know there is a difference between histoire, with a capital letter, and histoire? L'histoire is a study of past. Une histoire is a story. It can be true or invented. If you refer to the subject, you could say l'histoire de France est passionnante, which means the history of France is fascinating. Geography. 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 For example, 
J'ai un nouveau prof de géographie. This means I have a new geography teacher. In France, students study history and geography with the same teacher. That's why it is called Leçon d'Histoire Géographie. Biology. 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 For example, you can say la biologie est l'étude des organismes vivants, which means biology is the study of living organisms. Actually, in France, we usually say SVT instead of biologie. It's an acronym for Science de la Vie et de la Terre, Life and Earth Sciences. The next subject is chimie, chemistry. Chimie, chemistry. For example, le laboratoire est un endroit pour apprendre la chimie. The laboratory is a place to learn about chemistry. Chemistry and physics are taught in the same class by the same teacher. It is called leçon de physique chimie. Leçon means lesson. Physique, physics. Physique, physics. For example, you can say, je connais les bases de la physique, which means I know the basics of physics. Physique is also an adjective meaning physical and demanding. Mathématiques. Math. Mathématique. Math. For example, you can say ma matière préférée à l'école est les mathématiques. This means my favorite subject in school is math. If you want to say which subject in school is your favorite, you have to start your sentence like this. Ma matière préférée est. My favorite subject is. Informatique. Computer science. Informatique. This means computer science. Apprendre à utiliser l'informatique est indispensable à présent. To learn computer science is crucial these days. À présent, in French means now, these days. Don't confuse it with un présent, which means a gift. Education physique. Education physique. Physical education. For example, les cours d'éducation physique sont pour moi un échappatoire. Means physical education lessons are like a way out for me. Usually to talk about physical education, we say leçon de PS. It is an acronym for Education Physique et Sportive. Basically, it means physical education and sports. Music. 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 In France, students only take music lessons in middle school, like art classes. But these subjects can also be taken in high school as optional classes. Here is a simple sentence. Ce que je n'aime pas en musique c'est de devoir chanter devant tout le monde. This means what I don't like about music class in singing in front of everyone else. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the five most popular French bands. A really great way to learn any language is through its music. Here are a few famous French bands to check out. Let's begin. The first band is Louise Attack. Louise Attack. It really means Louise Attacks and refers to the French anarchist woman Louise Michel, who was active in the 19th century. Louise Attack est un groupe de pop rock français formé en 1994. Louise Attack is a pop rock band founded in 1994. Yeah, I remember my sister listening to them. I don't think I really like them, actually. Noir Désir. Noir Désir. One of their best sellers is Le Vent Nous Portera. You should definitely check it out if you haven't yet. Le Vent Nous Portera. I don't really want... don't remember. Noir Désir est un groupe de rock de Bordeaux. Noir Désir is a rock band from Bordeaux. Daft Punk. Daft Punk. This group has played an important role in the electronic music history and is known all around the world. Daft Punk est un groupe de musique électronique. Daft Punk is an electronic music band. 
Yeah, I love that funk. Another great band is Gojira. Gojira. When they formed their band in 1996, their name was Godzilla. They changed it to Gojira in 2001. Gojira est un groupe de métal extrême. Gojira is a heavy metal band. And if you like beats, you love I Am. Oh my gosh, I Am. I Am. I Am is a very famous French hip hop band from Marseille, formed in 1989. One of their best sellers is Petit Frère. I Am est un groupe de rap. I Am is a rap band. I love I Am. Petit Frère, uh, I don't remember the song, sorry. But you should listen to it. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod 101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the five most popular sports in France. Let's begin. The first sport is tennis. 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 In France, tennis used to be a high-class sport, but is now becoming more and more popular among everyone. Mon colocataire est professeur de tennis. My roommate is a tennis instructor. Yeah, remember watching Juan Carlos Ferrero? Oh my gosh, handsome man. The next is natation, swimming. Natation, swimming. Swimming is very popular in France. Nowadays, one of the most famous French swimmers is Jérémy Stravius. Ma sœur fait de la natation deux fois par semaine. My sister goes to swimming twice a week. Yeah, that's really good if you want to lose weight and tone at the same time. Rugby. 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 Rugby is especially popular among men in the southwestern part of France, in cities such as Toulouse or Biarritz. Vous savez jouer au rugby? Do you know how to play rugby? I don't. But it seems like this is kind of the same as you guys, you have, uh, how you call that? This, the thing? American football? American football, exactly. They're getting pretty different. Mm, really? I mean, this is the same ball, but you guys don't have that in America. You do have it in America. Oh, you have that as well. Oh, okay. Next up is football. Soccer. Football. Soccer. Soccer is definitely the most popular sport in France. Je n'aime pas le football. I don't like soccer. Yeah, France were um, the world champion in 1998, from what I recall. And I cried, I remember. Yeah, stupid. And then there is cyclism. Cycling. Cyclism. Cycling. This is very famous also because of the Tour de France, which takes place once a year and is one of the most followed cycling races in the world. I've never watched it. This is so boring. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the five biggest festivals in France. Let's begin. 14 juillet, Bastille Day. 14 juillet, Bastille Day. Le défilé du 14 juillet se déroule à Paris. The Bastille Day Parade is held in Paris. We can also call it La Fête de la Bastille or La Fête Nationale. Festival de Cannes, Cannes Film Festival. Festival de Cannes, Cannes Film Festival. Beaucoup de célébrités internationales viennent au Festival de Cannes. Many international celebrities go to the Cannes Film Festival. I have never been, but that sounds amazing. Carnaval de Nice, Nice Carnival. Carnaval de Nice, Nice Carnival. Le Carnaval de Nice attire chaque année plus d'un million de visiteurs. The Nice Carnival attracts over a million people every year. I have never been either, so please take me. Fête de la musique. World Music Day. 
Fête de la musique, World Music Day. La fête de la musique célèbre l'été. The World Music Festival celebrates the beginning of the summer. So it's actually um, happening on June 21st. Tour de France. Tour de France. Tour de France. Tour de France. J'ai regardé le Tour de France à la télévision. I watched the Tour de France on TV. This is really known in France. People love it. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the 10 must know words to party in France. Let's begin. Fête. Party. Fête. Party. A party is a fun thing to do, a place where you can meet other people and spend time together. Je vais à une fête d'anniversaire ce soir. I am going to a birthday party this evening. Danser. Dance. Danser. Dance. It's common to dance at parties. Elle aime danser. She likes to dance. Boîte. Club. Boîte. Club. Clubs are places with loud music where you can dance and look for a date. You can invite your friends by saying On va en boîte ce soir? Do you want to go to a club tonight? Manger. To eat. Manger. To eat. It is very common to eat at a party. Qui a mangé le dernier morceau de gâteau? Who ate the last piece of cake? Yeah, I hate that. Festival. 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 Festivals are usually less informal than parties and last for more than one day. Nous allons à ce festival chaque année. We go to this festival every year. For example, you can go to Coachella. Coachella, Coachella, Coachella. <laughs> Boire. To drink. Boire. To drink. Drinking together is also a way to party and have fun. But be careful. Elle a trop bu. She drank too much. Yeah, please don't drink too much. Just drink water. It's enough for you. Santé. Cheers. Santé. Cheers. French people say santé when touching glasses before a toast. Santé. Chin. Santé. Devenir ivre. To get drunk. Devenir ivre. To get drunk. This is very common as people usually drink a lot at parties. Il est devenu ivre au bout de deux verres seulement. He got drunk after only two drinks. Please don't do that, that's not good. Music. 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 Music is necessary to warm up the atmosphere at parties. It is also a good conversation starter. For example, you can say, Quel est ton genre de musique préféré? What is your favorite kind of music? I love R&B. Ami, friend. Ami, friend. Parties are made to make friends. Je sors avec mes amis ce weekend. I'll go out with my friends this weekend. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from frenchpod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 pickup lines you can use at your own risk. Let's begin. <laughs> Love it. Si le verbe aimer n'existait pas, je l'aurais inventé en te voyant. Si le verbe aimer n'existait pas, je l'aurais inventé en te voyant. If the verb to love didn't exist, I would have invented it upon seeing you. This is an indirect declaration of love. It's like comparing the other person to the feeling of love itself. So romantic. 
People use it a lot. I, I've seen it in movies. On devrait t'arrêter pour excès de beauté sur la voie publique. On devrait t'arrêter pour excès de beauté sur la voie publique. You should get arrested for being excessively beautiful in public. Oh my gosh, I would love somebody to tell me that. You can use this if you want to tell someone in a fun way that they look beautiful. If you make everyone laugh, it did for me, so it's a good icebreaker. J'ai un problème avec mon portable, il manque ton numéro. J'ai un problème avec mon portable, il manque ton numéro. I have a problem with my phone, your number is missing. I've never heard this one, but wow, I love it. Use this if you want to ask someone their phone number in a fun and indirect way. Yeah, use it. That's really funny. Il y a tellement de soleil dans tes yeux que je bronze quand tu me regardes. Il y a tellement de soleil dans tes yeux que je bronze quand tu me regardes. There is so much sun in your eyes that I can get a tan when you look at me. This is both fun and funny and you need to be brave to use this as probably the other person will just laugh at you. J'aimerais être une goutte de sang pour mieux connaître ton cœur. So romantic. J'aimerais être une goutte de sang pour mieux connaître ton cœur. Très romantique. I would like to be a drop of blood so I could better know your heart. This is so poetic. Use it if you feel romantic. Yes, use it for me please. I've never heard it before. Tu t'appelles Google parce que je trouve en toi tout ce que je cherche. Tu t'appelles Google parce que je trouve en toi tout ce que je cherche. Is your name Google? Because I find in you everything that I'm looking for. Thumbs up. Such a good one. Using this, the other person will certainly laugh, but at the same time, it's very daring and direct. Est-ce que tu as un plan? Je me suis perdu dans tes yeux. Est-ce que tu as un plan? Je me suis perdu dans tes yeux. Do you have a map? Because I am lost in your eyes. Oh my gosh, that's so romantic! Use this when you want to compliment someone's eyes and make them laugh at the same time. Why nobody tell me those stuff? I love it! Viens vivre dans mon cœur sans payer de loyer. Viens vivre dans mon cœur sans payer de loyer. Come live in my heart rent free. This is like playing your last card as it's like saying if you don't have anyone else, I am available. Je suis free, je suis libre, I am available, yes, you hear me? Tu as de beaux yeux, tu sais. Tu as de beaux yeux, tu sais. You know you have beautiful eyes. This is used a lot. This is pretty direct, so you need to say it with the right tone of the voice. Tu as de beaux yeux, tu sais. Tu dois être fatigué parce que tu as trotté dans ma tête toute la journée. Tu dois être fatigué parce que tu as trotté dans ma tête toute la journée. You must be tired because you've been running through my head all day. That's like saying I can't stop thinking about you. It's a fun way to tell someone I haven't been able to stop thinking about you. It is, I love it. Bonjour tout le monde, je suis Lindsay. Welcome to another episode of Top French Words. Today our title is Five Sentence Patterns for Beginners. Let's start. Je m'appelle. My name is. You can use this when you introduce yourself to others. Using this pattern, you can say Je m'appelle Claude, which means my name is Claude. Je suis de. I am from. Use this when people ask you where you're from or when you want to include it as a part of your self-introduction. Où est? Where is? Here we have où est, which means where is. For example, you can use it to say où est la gare, which means where is the station. It's very useful when you are lost in France. J'aime. I like. 
When you want to express that you like something, you can use this pattern. J'aime. In French, to like and to love are both translated with the verb aimer. If you want to sound less passionate, you can add the adjective bien. For example, j'aime bien le chocolat. If chocolate is really your thing, you can say j'adore le chocolat. Adorer is a verb we can translate as to love or to adore. In a sentence, you can say j'aime le chocolat to mean I like chocolate. Je n'aime pas. I don't like. You can use this pattern when you want to express that you don't like something. For example, you can say je n'aime pas les choux de Bruxelles, which means I don't like Brussels sprouts. That's all for today. Merci for watching and I will see you next time. A bientôt. Hi everyone. I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about 10 ways to motivate yourself when learning French. Let's begin. Je m'imagine qu'un jour j'irai visiter ou habiter en France. I imagine that one day I will visit or live in France. France has many beautiful cities with nice things to see and good food. Whether it's just for sightseeing or living, it's really worth it. J'étudie également d'autres aspects de la langue, ce qui rend l'apprentissage du français plus enrichissant. I also study other aspects of the culture, which makes it more rewarding to study French. It's always interesting to compare your own culture to others, to understand why things are the way they are. By doing research, you can avoid certain culture shocks while traveling. J'aime trouver des mots drôles en apprenant le français. I like to find funny words in French. It's easier to remember words when you associate them with something. Je deviens ami avec des personnes qui parlent le français. I make friends with people who speak French. It's really helpful to talk to native speakers, especially those who don't understand your mother tongue, as it forces you to speak. It's a very good way to improve your speaking skills. Je regarde les vidéos YouTube de personnes ayant appris le français avec succès. I watch YouTube videos from other people who have successfully learned French. It's always good to get some advice from other people who have been there. Since everybody is different, you might find some things easier and other things harder than they do. J'aime utiliser le français pour passer des commandes dans des restaurants français. I enjoy using French to order at French restaurants. If the waiters and waitresses are native speakers, they might be impressed and it's a good way to practice ordering food because you will need it if you go to France. Je regarde des films et séries françaises et suis content ou contente quand je peux apprendre un mot ou une phrase. I watch French movies and TV shows and enjoy the feeling I get when I can understand a word or a sentence. Watching movies and TV shows is good for hearing native French, things you don't learn at school and common expressions. If you enjoy watching French shows and movies, you won't feel like it's studying. It will just be fun. Being motivated is the best way to learn. J'ai changé la langue de mon téléphone portable, je l'utilise en français maintenant. I changed the language on my cell phone. I use it in French now. It helps you learn some useful vocabulary from everyday life. Je lis des livres pour enfants en français. I read books for children in French. Children's books have a lot of difficult French words, so it's a good way to learn many new words. J'écris ma liste de courses en français. I write my shopping list in French. This makes both studying French and shopping fun. Je suis des recettes françaises quand je cuisine. Okay, that's all about 10 ways to motivate yourself when learning French. I will see you next time. A bientôt. Bonjour tout le monde, je suis Lindsay. Welcome to another episode of Top French Words. Today we will learn 10 phrases to use when you are angry. Let's start. Tu m'énerves. You get on my nerves. You usually use this phrase when someone or something irritates you, 
For example, after a fight with a sibling, you can tell them, tu m'énerves, you go on my nerves. Tu as dit quoi? What did you say? You don't say this when you don't understand something. You say it to show that you are annoyed about what has just been said to see if the person dares to say it again. Laisse-moi tranquille. Leave me alone. You can use this to show that you are mad at someone or hurt and that you need some distance. Tu te fous de moi. Are you kidding me? You can use this when you are really annoyed by something and can't accept it. Peu importe. Whatever. This is not very strong. It's used to show that you can't be bothered. If someone asks you what do you want to eat for lunch, pasta or pizza, and you answer peu importe, it means that you don't mind letting the other person choose because any option is fine. Arrête! Cut it out! Arrête can be interpreted differently according to the intonation. When said strongly, it means stop that right now. In a joking tone, it means something like what? Really? Je ne veux pas te parler. I don't want to talk to you. This indicates clearly that you don't want any contact with someone. Probably because they did something that you were not happy about. Je suis contrarié. I am upset. You can use this to complain to friends or family members when you are disappointed about something. Et alors? So what? This is a way to say, what's wrong with that? It implies, mind your own business. Nothing is wrong with that. And I don't care about what you think. Tu prends pour qui? Who do you think you are? When someone is being overconfident about something, you can bring them back to reality with this useful phrase. That's all for today. Merci for watching and I will see you next time. A bientôt. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 French slang phrases. Être taqué, to be going flat out. So, être au taquet means to be ready for something, to be uh, like when you are really motivated. You can say, je suis au taquet, or I'm going flat out. Se faire griller, to be busted. For example, if you're caught cheating, you can say, oh mon dieu, je me suis fait griller. Oh my god, I'm being busted. C'est ouf. It's crazy. So for example, if somebody tells you a story that doesn't even make sense for you, you're going to say, c'est ouf. It's crazy. Ouais, enfin. Yeah, well. So for example, somebody wants to invite you to a party and you're not really sure and then this person insists and says, Tom is going to be there. Uh, and you're going to say, ouais, enfin. Yeah, well. Ça roule. All right. Um, if uh, um, somebody invites you to dinner and say, hey, Lindsay, do you want to go out to dinner with me? Then you can say, ça roule. All right. Être vénère, to be angry. So when somebody really pisses you off, you're going to say, je suis vénère. I am angry. Mec. Guy. So that's an expression that us French people use instead of saying a man, we're going to say mec. Guy. Meuf. Chick. So for example, if you see a beautiful girl in the street, well, usually men are going to say, c'est une belle meuf. It's a cute chick. Avoir le seum. To be pissed. So when somebody really annoys you or when you're really annoyed by a situation, you can say, j'ai le seum. I am pissed. Mauviette. Wimp. That's an expression that you use, uh, for example, when you see a man that is scared of everything, you're going to say, c'est une mauviette. It's a wimp. 
or is a wimp. And see you next time. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FrenchPod101.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Top Words. I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. Today, we're going to be talking about tongue twisters. Tongue twisters are called virlangues in French. The first one is 16 chairs sèches. 16 chairs are drying. 16 chairs sèches. 16 chairs are drying. Tongue twisters are phrases that are difficult to say. So they are a really great way to practice your pronunciation. Yeah, I'm having a hard time with it. Try to repeat them as much as you can. Says, chaise, sèche. Says, chaise, sèche. Says, chaise, sèche. I think I got it right. Les chaussettes de l'archiduchesse sont-elles sèches, archi sèches? This literally means, are the archduchesse's socks dry? Extremely dry. Les chaussettes de l'archiduchesse sont-elles sèches? Archi sèche. This literally means are the archduchesse's socks dry? Extremely dry. Les chaussettes de l'archiduchesse sont-elles sèches? Archi sèche. This tongue twister is probably the most famous and everyone in France knows it. So try to learn it. That is so hard, right? Try to do it. Les chaussettes de l'archiduchesse sont-elles sèches, archiduchesse? Archiduchesse? Un chasseur sachant chasser doit savoir chasser sans son chien. It means a hunter who can hunt should be able to hunt without his dog. This next one is very difficult. Un chasseur sachant chasser doit savoir chasser sans son chien. This means a hunter who can hunt should be able to hunt without his dog. Un chasseur sachant chasser doit savoir chasser sans son chien. Really hard. Suis-je bien chez ce cher Serge? Am I at dear Serge's place? Suis-je bien chez ce cher Serge? Suis-je bien chez ce cher Serge? Am I at dear Serge's place? I uh, actually didn't know this one. I tried to say it quickly. <laughs> it's uh, almost impossible. Suis-je bien chez ce cher Serge? Hey, suis-je bien chez ce cher... Suis-je bien chez ce... Ah! Suis-je bien chez ce cher cher Serge? Si, I cannot even say it. Je veux et j'exige d'excuses, excuse. The literal meaning is I want and demand exquisite apologies. Je veux et j'exige d'exquise, excuse. This literal meaning is I want and demand exquisite apologies. Try repeating it. Je veux et j'exige d'exquise, excuse. Je veux et j'exige d'exquise, excuse. Je veux et j'exige d'excuse, excuse. I did it, right? Hi everybody, welcome back to Top Words. My name is Lindsay and today we're going to talk about the top 10 phrases to never use in a relationship. Let's begin. That sounds kind of scary. The first phrase is... Tu as changé. You've changed. Tu as changé. You've changed. This means that you don't recognize your partner anymore. Mm. Sorry. Not really good. Il est où le problème? What's the big deal? Il est où le problème? What's the big deal? Wow. This sounds like a declaration of war. It makes me laugh, sorry. Tu es tellement. You are so. Tu es tellement. You are so. Try to complete the sentence by yourself. Usually, tu es tellement chiant. You're so annoying. Il faut qu'on parle. 
We need to talk. Il faut qu'on parle. We need to talk. This sentence reeks of a breakup. Yeah, it does. You see that in a lot of movies, actually. Du calme. Relax. Du calme. This means relax and sounds pretty haughty, so never use it in a fight. Ça m'est égal. Whatever. Ça m'est égal. Whatever. This is only ever used when you don't care anymore. Yeah, whatever. Ça m'est égal. Je gagne plus que toi. I earn more than you. Je gagne plus que toi. I earn more than you. This is for all the proud breadwinners who want to piss off the partner. It's also a surefire argument starter. Qu'est-ce que tu portes? What are you wearing? Qu'est-ce que tu portes? What are you wearing? It is useful if you want to make your partner feel inappropriate. Ne t'approche pas de mon téléphone. Stay away from my phone. Ne t'approche pas de mon téléphone. Stay away from my phone. Don't say this unless you are really hiding something. Yeah, I hate when people touch my phone. Hell no, don't look at my messages, please. Je te déteste. I hate you. Je te déteste. I hate you. This is straightforward and doesn't need an explanation, right? Oh, guys, I love you, you know that. Okay, so that's all for this lesson. Which phrase will you use to break up? Leave us a comment letting us know. And I'll see you next time. A bientôt. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 15 must-know phrases to go shopping. Let's begin. C'est combien? C'est combien? How much is it? You can simply point at something and say c'est combien. C'est combien? Yeah, I ask that a lot. Vous l'avez dans une autre couleur? Vous l'avez dans une autre couleur? Do you have it in another color? You can ask this when shopping for anything that is available in different colors. Vous l'avez en taille M? Vous l'avez en taille M? Do you have it in medium? This is a useful phrase when shopping for clothes or anything that has sizes. Uh, because I wear S or XS, I will say Vous l'avez en S ou XS? J'en veux deux. J'en veux deux. I want two of these. It is pretty simple. You just want to say J'en veux plus de amounts you desire. For example, if you want three, you just say J'en veux trois. Je peux le voir? Je peux le voir. May I see it? You can also explicitly mention what you want to see. For example, je peux voir le menu? Je peux voir le menu, which means may I see the menu? Or um, je peux voir ce crayon? May I see this pen? Je peux l'essayer? Je peux l'essayer? Can I try it on? This may come in handy in a closing shop. Yeah, I usually ask to the um, cashier if I can uh, try tops or dresses. J'aime bien celui-là. J'aime bien celui-là. I like that one. Use this when you make up your mind for something and you want to buy it. For example, you can say, j'aime bien ce jean. I really like these jeans. Je n'aime pas cette couleur. Je n'aime pas cette couleur. I don't like this color. This sentence works as a good excuse when you don't want to buy something. I actually use it a lot. If you want to be more general and say something like, I don't like this, you can simply say, je n'aime pas cela. Je n'aime pas cela. For example, je n'aime pas, um, je n'aime pas ce, ce top que vous me présentez. I don't like this top that you are showing me. Je cherche. Je cherche. I am looking for. Use this when you need help from a shop assistant. For example, you can say, Je cherche un cadeau d'anniversaire. Je cherche un cadeau d'anniversaire. Which means, I am looking for a birthday present. 
Usually, from what I see in America, shopping assistants come to come to you directly and say, "Hey, do you need help finding anything?" Sometimes a bit annoying. Est-ce qu'il y a un miroir? Est-ce qu'il y a un miroir? Is there a mirror? This is another way to explain what you are looking for. You can substitute miroir with another noun. For example, uh, est-ce qu'il y a des toilettes? Are there any restrooms? Vous acceptez la carte de crédit? Vous acceptez la carte de crédit. This means, do you take credit cards? Yes, yeah, some places they just take cash. If you don't have any cash, be sure to ask this question before purchasing any service or product. Yeah, a lot of people were, uh, walk with their credit card in hands, not with cash. So, be sure to ask. C'est trop serré. C'est trop serré. It's too tight. You can use another word instead of serré. For example, c'est trop cher. C'est trop cher. It's too expensive. I use this sentence a lot. So hey, if you want to buy me something, I take it. Où sont les cabines d'essayage? Où sont les cabines d'essayage? Where are the dressing rooms? This is useful in a closing shop. But you may use it in a different situation by changing the last word. For example, Où sont les toilettes? Où sont les toilettes? Which means, where is the bathroom? Je l'utilise beaucoup. I use it a lot. Vous fermez à quelle heure? Vous fermez à quelle heure? What time do you close? It's important to check opening hours or heures d'ouverture. Usually in France, shops are open Monday to Saturday from 9 in the morning until 8 in the evening. But in small towns, some shops may be closed during lunchtime. Et ça peut être fermé également très tôt. It can be closed very early as well. Je voudrais retourner. Je voudrais retourner. I would like to return. This is a key phrase when you want to return something you bought. Be sure to check the return policies. For example, many shops require the receipt. Je le fais souvent quand je veux retourner des vêtements. I do it a lot when I want to return clothes. Okay, so that's all for this lesson. Which idea do you like the most? Leave a comment letting us know. Don't forget to like, subscribe and go to frenchpod101.com for more resources. We'll see you next time. Ton, 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 ton. Ah! Welcome back, watchers. This week will be about top 10 animal words. So let's see what they do in French. Miaou, miaou. Cat's meow. Miaou. Miaou, miaou, miaou. Tiny kitten. And they look at you and be like, me, me. And you're so cute. Miaou, miaou. The tiny kitten goes, meow, meow. Or, le chaton fait, miaou, miaou. You're cute. Woof, woof. Dogs bark. Woof, woof. The dogs bark. Woof, 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 woof. When his master comes home, the dogs go bark, bark. Quand le maître rentre à la maison, son chien fait woof, woof. Coin, coin. Ducks quack. The ducks quack. Coin, coin. <laughs> coin is also a, a, a corner. I don't know why the duck is saying that. It's like saying corner, corner. <laughs> Les canards dans la mare font coin, coin. The ducks on the pond goes quack, quack. Coin, coin. Pig snort. The pig snort. I really don't know what they do in French. We just go like... And yeah, groin is also the nose of the pig. So this is the groin. But we just snort like... I'm a little piggy, is my snort. Oink, 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 oink. Je suis un petit cochon. Voici mon groin. Coin, groin, groin. Coin, groin, groin. Cocorico, rooster's crow. Cocorico, the rooster's crow. Early in the morning, the rooster goes cockle doodle doo. Tout le matin, le coq fait cocorico and wakes you up, and then you just and roast it and have it for dinner. Coa, coa. Frogs croak. The frogs croak. Coa, coa. When you're walking in the countryside at night, you can hear the frog go ribbit, ribbit. 
quand on marche la nuit à la campagne, on peut entendre les grenouilles faire croa, croa. Piu, piu. Chicks pip. Piu, piu. It's a chicks pip. When you get a tiny chick in your hand and you look at you, yeah. Piu, 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 piu. Find the tiny kitten meaning. Le petit poussin fait piu, piu. Piu, piu. Well, in French, there's a tiny cute chick, they go piu, 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 piu. So you can just go piu, piu. It's a space chick. So funny. Beat. Mice quick. The mice go beat. On peut entendre les souris faire pit, pit entre les murs. You can hear the mice go squeak, squeak between the walls. Cui, cui. Birds tweet. Cui, cui. It's also the sound for cooking. Au printemps, les oiseaux font cui, cui. In spring, the birds go chip, 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 chip. Moo. Cows moo. Moo. And you have to put it really long like this. Moo. I used to take the cows and put them up in the mountain. And then when the season changed, I have to take the cows and put them down the mountain. That's a pain and it's raining and you're full of mud. The cow goes moo. La vache fait moo. On peut entendre les vaches faire moo dans la montagne. You can hear the cows mooing in the mountains. Moo. And so that was top 10 animal words in French. Bye, watchers. And tell me your favorite animal sound in the comments in your language. See ya! Hi, watchers! Welcome back, and this way we are going to talk about 10 words for connecting thoughts. I'm really bad at connecting thoughts, so maybe we can learn things together this time. Let's go! Ensuite, then. Ensuite, then. I took a shower, then went to work. J'ai pris une douche et ensuite je suis allé au travail. My morning routine, what? Cependant, however. Cependant, however, I like the blue version. However, pink also looks good. J'aime la version bleue. Cependant, le rose est aussi joli. Like when you're redecorating your house. De l'autre côté, on the other hand. De l'autre côté, on the other hand. It's sunny today, so we should go outside. On the other hand, it might rain later. Aujourd'hui, il fait soleil, nous devrions sortir. De l'autre côté, il va peut-être pleuvoir un peu plus tard. And, and then your holiday is ruined and you don't get to do some Plutôt, instead. Plutôt, instead. Let's go by boat instead. Allons-y plutôt en bateau. Like if you want to go to an island and you can choose between the plane and the boat. Let's go by boat, it's nicer. <laughs> Unless there is a storm and then you get caught in the boat and then you are super sick. Awesome! Oh look, Leah, yeah, we are going to die! Say bye to family and daddy! <laughs> what? Yeah, there is water in the boat and we are in the middle of nowhere. Oh, That was scary. That's why I don't like being on boats. De plus, moreover, besides. De plus. Moreover, besides, I'm lost in the wood. Moreover, my phone battery is dead. Je suis perdu dans la forêt. De plus, la batterie de mon téléphone est morte. Également, likewise. Également, likewise. I read this book and my sister did likewise. <laughs> J'ai lu ce livre et ma sœur l'a lu également. Aussi, also. Aussi, also. We also have muffins. Nous avons aussi des muffins. Pendant ce temps, meanwhile. Pendant ce temps, meanwhile. J'étais en train de mettre la table et pendant ce temps, le chien a mangé tous les muffins. I was setting the table. Meanwhile, the dog had all the muffins. My doggy. Something tasty, I ate that. En réalité, in fact. En réalité, in fact. The dog didn't eat all the muffins. In fact, I ate them. Le chien n'a pas mangé tous les muffins. En réalité, c'était moi. And they were so good. Finalement. Finally. Finalement. Finally. Nous nous rencontrons finalement. Finally, we meet. Thanks, all my watchers. Signoring. And connecting thoughts. So we learned 10 words for connecting thoughts today. Tell me in a long sentence by connecting your thoughts and using some of them. Mm, if you can connect your thoughts, because I cannot. <laughs> and we will see you next time. Bye. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the 10 
must know prepositions and conjunctions for French learners. Let's begin. A. A. Two. Nous sommes allés à la piscine. Nous sommes allés à la piscine. We went to the swimming pool. Nous sommes allés à Hawaï. We went to Hawaï. De. De. From. Je viens de France. Je viens de France. I am from France. Or you can say, je viens de Cuba. I am from Cuba. Avec. Avec. With. Je pars en vacances avec ma sœur. Je pars en vacances avec ma sœur. I am going on holiday with my sister. If you go with your brother, je pars en vacances avec mon frère. I'm going on vacation with my brother. Où? Où? Tu veux des frites ou de la purée avec ta viande? Tu veux des frites ou de la purée avec ta viande? Do you want fries or mashed potatoes with your meat? Est-ce que tu veux du pain avec du beurre? Would you like some bread with butter? Mais. Mais. But. Ce t-shirt est beau, mais cher. Ce t-shirt est beau, mais cher. This t-shirt is pretty, but expensive. Ce t-shirt est beau, mais trop grand. This t-shirt is pretty, but too big. Et. Et. And. J'ai fait un gâteau au chocolat et une tarte aux fraises. J'ai fait un gâteau au chocolat et une tarte aux fraises. I made a chocolate cake and a strawberry tart. Gosh, that sounds amazing. Donc. Donc. So. J'ai beaucoup mangé ce midi, donc je n'ai pas encore faim. J'ai beaucoup mangé ce midi, donc je n'ai pas encore faim. I had a lot to eat for lunch, so I'm not hungry yet. Well, I would say that I am right now. Sans. Sans. Without. Un coca sans glaçon, s'il vous plaît. Un coca sans glaçon, s'il vous plaît. One coke without ice, please. Je préfère le soda. I prefer soda. Entre. Entre. Between. Il s'est garé entre deux bus. Il s'est garé entre deux bus. He parked between two buses. You can say that when you are, when you try to choose between two men. J'essaye de choisir entre ces deux garçons. Car. Car. Because. Je suis rentré tôt car je ne me sentais pas bien. Je suis rentré tôt car je ne me sentais pas bien. I went home early because I didn't feel well. Ce matin, j'ai pris une pilule parce que je ne me sentais pas bien. This morning, I took a pill because I wasn't feeling good. Welcome back, watchers! This week, it's all about games, and we're going to learn about 10 gamers speak words. Oh, I should have taken my controller and everything. Let's go. Jeu d'aventure. Adventure game. Jeu d'aventure. Adventure game. Finishing an adventure game takes a while. Finir un jeu d'aventure prend longtemps. Because you have to go everywhere and then solve all the puzzles and then you have to do the side quest and, and, and then you lost track and you have to go back to the main quest to finish the story, but then... Uh, adventure game! Avatar. 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 The last airbender. The tiny picture you have on your profile or the character you're playing can also be called an avatar, actually. My avatar is a cute cat. My avatar is a funny cat. Mon avatar est un chat rigolo. It goes like... Nya. Joueur. Player. Joueur. Player. Un joueur de League of Legends. A League of Legends player. Option. 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 Options. Changing your settings in the option menu. Changer ses paramètres dans le menu des options. Manette. Controller. Manette. Controller. <laughs> I play Tomb Raider with a controller. Je joue à Tomb Raider avec une manette. 
I don't know, something you can just chill in your seat and do boo 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 boo. And for some games, it's way more convenient than having to type on your keyboard, like Binding of Isaac. Personnage non joueur, PNG, non player character, NPC. Personnage non joueur, non playing character. That one guy you have to go to talk to that gives you the quest to go pick up nuts in the forest for half an hour. Thank you, thank you. The NPC gave me a quest. Le PNG m'a donné une quête. Débutant, noob, scrub. Débutant, noob, scrub, scrub, noob. Also works in English. The scrub made us lose. Le noob nous a fait perdre. <coughs> Stupid noob. Tank, 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 tank. Mundo! I'm really bad at playing tank. Je suis très mauvais en tank. Because I, I really like the ranged people better because I'm not in the battle and the tank just go in here and be like and, and tank everything and I just die. I'll play the Heroes of the Storm, Zagara, she's kind of tanky. It's an alien spawn mother. V life. V life. I lost all my lives. J'ai perdu toutes mes vies. Game over. Demo. Demo. A video game demo. Une demo de jeu vidéo. When you can preview it and not play the whole game. J'ai joué à la demo. I played the demo. So that's it for top 10 gamer game word or gamer speak words. Tell me what game you play in the comment. Meanwhile, have fun and enjoy your games. Put the settings in French to help you learn faster. See ya! Hi everyone! Are you ready to eat some French food? Here are 10 must-know vocabulary for the restaurant. Let's go! Serveur, waiter. Serveur, waiter. Frédéric is serveur. Frédéric is a waiter because he has to pay for, I don't know, university, so in the summer you can be a waiter. Serveuse, waitress. Serveuse, waitress. La serveuse tient un plateau avec des verres. The waitress is holding a tray with glasses. Sure. I couldn't be a waitress because I would just break everything because I'm clumsy. I admire people who can wait properly. <laughs> menu. 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 Ce menu est à prix fixe. This menu is at a fixed price. Yeah, when you go to a restaurant, you will usually have uh, a la carte menu where you can choose the items you want. And then the fixed price menu when you can choose between two or three different items and if you want appetizers and a main and one more thing and if you want dessert or cheese. And depending on that, the price can vary. Commander. To order. Commander. To order. J'ai commandé le plat du jour. I ordered the dish of the day. Good job. Oh. Water. Oh. Water. Tu devrais boire plus d'eau. You should drink more water. And I should also drink more water. Mm. It gets your skin nice and fresh. <laughs> Dessert. 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 Desert. Desert is my favorite thing. La tarte tatin est un dessert populaire qui peut être commandé dans la plupart des brasseries françaises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tarte tatin is a common dessert that can be ordered in most French brasseries, which are traditional tiny restaurants. It's a nice dessert with apple and the secret is to bake it reversed, so with the apple at the bottom and the dough on top. So they say. I think it was discovered when someone dropped the tart the other way or put it the wrong way in the oven and then discovered that, that it was a tasty way to bake. Because the dough will keep the warmth inside and the apple will bake in their own juice and being a bit steamed too because the dough is on top. And when you flip it back, then the, the dough stay drier, let's say, because it doesn't soak up all the juices from down. The apple? Yeah, from all the apples. Oh. So then you flip it back and it's nice. The oh. apple gets really tight and compact and there is a really molten. Yum, 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 yum. Restauration rapide. Fast food. Restauration rapide. Fast food. Les hamburgers et les frites sont considérés comme étant de la restauration rapide. Burgers and fries are considered fast food. Nom, 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 nom. I like hamburgers with bacon. What are we talking about? Probably food again. Restaurant. 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 
Restaurant. Le restaurant est très bon. The restaurant is really good. Of course it is. It's French. If you can save a bit when you go to France and go to a really good restaurant, you should try it because it's worth it. So try it at least once. Not. Bill. Not. Bill. Server, la note. Waiter, the bill. Try to be a bit more polite and say at least, please. Like, can I have the bill, please? And don't call the waiter, waiter. Just say, can I have the bill, please? Puis-je avoir la note, s'il vous plaît? Would be a more polite way to say so. Delicieux. Delicious. Delicieux. Delicious. Mm. C'est plus que bon, c'est délicieux. This is more than good. This is delicious. I like delicious crepes. And you can make a ton of crepes and then you can eat all the crepes. With as many toppings as you want. Mm. My favorite is chocolate and banana and whipped cream. And we will see you next time. See ya. Nom, 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 nom. Hee haw. <laughs> Hee haw. Hee haw. <laughs> Too much sugar. <laughs> bah. World map. Yeah, I think you can tell it's definitely not your voice. Hey everyone! Is it time for you to buy gifts soon? Apparently it is. We are going to talk about 10 gifts ideas you must know in French. Let's go! Ordinateur portable. Laptop. Ordinateur portable. Laptop. J'ai acheté un ordinateur portable d'occasion. I bought a second-hand laptop. That's a bit cheap for a gift, isn't it? If you are going to give someone a laptop, Buy a new one. What is your laptop or your computer? Leave it in the comments. Maybe I will need to buy a new one. Parfum. Perfume. Parfum. Perfume. Ce parfum sent très bon. This perfume smells very good. Worst gift idea ever. <laughs> Please, people, don't buy a perfume for someone. Because you don't know if it's going to fit their own body odor. Or maybe they might be allergic. Or maybe they don't like it. And perfumes are very personal, so unless you know they are using that one perfume, don't buy a perfume. Livre. Book. Livre. Book. Il m'a fallu un mois pour finir ce livre. It took me a month to finish this book. It's either a really long book or a really boring one. Carte du monde. World map. Carte du monde. World map. Il y a une carte du monde sur le mur de ma chambre. There is a word map on my bedroom wall. You should put uh, the map and then fill out the countries where you've been. Uh, and then the more you go, the more colorful it gets. That's a nice thing to do, I think. Where have you been in the world? Leave me a comment. How full is your world map? Appareil photo. Camera. Appareil photo. Camera. Ton appareil photo est vieux. Your camera is old. That's why you are gifting me one. It's about gifts after all. Smartphone. 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 La batterie de mon smartphone est puissante. My smartphone's battery is powerful. It is, because it's not a Samsung. Ha 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 ha. Console de jeu. Game console. Console de jeu. Game console. J'ai acheté une console de jeu sur Internet. I bought this game console on the Internet. Which one is your game console? Tell me in the comment as well. Dictionnaire. Dictionary. Dictionnaire. Dictionary. Il utilise un dictionnaire électronique. He uses an electronic dictionary. Yeah, I used to have one of those too. Vol pour la France. A flight to France. Vol pour la France. A flight to France. Combien coûte un vol pour la France? How much does a flight to France cost? Depends where you are coming from. That's a really nice gift if you are interested in France. DVD, 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 DVD. Il a une grosse collection de DVD. He has a large collection of DVDs. Do you have a bunch of DVDs? If so, which ones? Leave a comment. So tell me in the comment what are the gifts you are going to get. And more French word for gifts or gift ideas. Or just word of French that you can buy and gift. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye! Gift! Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Yeah, whenever you're ready. No! Please?
Hi! Hello! Woo! Hey! How you doing? Today we're gonna see 10 ways to say hello in French. Here we go. Bonjour. Good morning. We say it in the morning. It's literally good day, but you can use it usually in the morning because then you can say bonsoir for the night or good night for the night. Salut! Hello! That's a more friendly way to say hi. Mm, don't use it with your boss or at work or the first time you meet someone in kind of a professional setting. In that case, you use bonjour. And this one is more informal, so with friends or with people you are acquainted with a lot or friendly with. Comment allez-vous? How have you been? This one is again uh, pretty formal, so if you want to say it with a friend, it would be comment vas-tu? So, comment allez-vous is the formal way. So, use it again with your boss or with people you don't really know. Usually, you say, ah, bonjour, comment allez-vous? Hi, hello, how have you been? Comment vas-tu? How are you? And now, for the informal way, it's comment vas-tu? How are you? How are you doing? So, informal one for friends and family and people you know. Salut, comment vas-tu? Hi, how are you doing? Comment ça va? How is it going? which means the same than the previous two, but it's another way of saying it. So how are you doing? Tell me in the comments. Comment se passe votre journée? How is your day? Leave it in the comment again. How is your day? I hope you are having a good one. My day is fine. Quoi de neuf? What's up? Literally, what is new? So this one is also familiar, so using it with French. Yeah, this one is informal, so you should use it with friends. Bonsoir. Good evening. This one you can use to greet people with or say goodbye as well. So if you say bonsoir when leaving, it also works. Use it when it's night or evening. Ravi de vous rencontrer. Nice to meet you. This one is a bit formal. So yeah, since you are meeting someone for the first time, I think it's appropriate to use in almost every case. Mm, or if you want to be a bit Less formal because, for example, a friend introduces you to another friend. You can say "ravi de te rencontrer" or "ravi de vous rencontrer." Nice to meet you. Comment ça va? How is everything? So you can use it instead of "how are you doing." Comment ça va? How is everything? The end. So how are you doing, people? Leave it in the comment. Bonsoir. If it's night. Bye bye. Hey, we're going to the Chubby Bunny Challenge today, guys. <laughs> Hi everyone! I hope you had a nice new start of the year and to continue it well, let's talk about what are your top 10 language learning goals for the year. Let's go! Je vais finir la série des phrases de survie sur frenchpod101.com en écoutant deux cours par jour. I'll finish survival phrases series on frenchpod101.com by listening to two lessons a day. Je vais finir la série des phrases de survie sur frenchpod101.com en écoutant deux cours par jour. I'll finish survival phrases series on frenchpod101.com by listening to two lessons a day. Why not? That's a nice goal because I think there are 60 lessons, so two a day is not that hard because they are short. And you should be done in a month. I know our website and our products. Je vais finir la lecture d'un livre en français en lisant 10 pages par jour. I finish reading one French book by reading 10 pages a day. Je vais finir la lecture d'un livre en français en lisant 10 pages par jour. I finish reading one French book by reading 10 pages a day. You should start with comic books because they have pictures so it's easier to understand and then when you are more comfortable with the language, you can switch to more formal and difficult books. Maybe read novels in French because they are short at first. And then you can move on. Read Harry Potter in French. That's a nice exercise. Je vais réussir mon examen de français. I pass my French test. Je vais réussir mon examen de français. I pass my French test. Good luck. The hardest part for a French exam, I would say, is the writing part, because writing French is quite difficult because it's written very differently from what it sounds. So practice this one if you need to pass a French exam. Je comprendrai parfaitement un film français en le regardant tous les jours. I fully understand one French movie by watching it every day. Je comprendrai parfaitement un film français en le regardant tous les jours. 
I fully understand one French movie by watching it every day. Then here again, you can start with cartoons, with or without the subtitles, hopefully without the subtitles once you get comfortable, and cartoons because they articulate better. So French cartoons, for example, are Tintin, which is the reporter guy with tiny hair like this. And Asterix and Obelix is also really popular and you can find a bunch of episodes online. And when you're comfortable with hearing cartoons, you can switch to full French movies. I think the most famous one is Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Poulain. Before South Park, I really sucked at English. I always had like 11 out of 20 points on my exam stuff. And after six months of South Park, I got 19 out of 20. Je vais faire une présentation de moi de 3 minutes en français à mes amis français. I'll give a 3 minute introductory speech in French to my French friends. Je vais faire une présentation de moi de 3 minutes en français à mes amis français. I'll give a 3 minute introductory speech in French to my French friends. So what would be your introductory speech? Leave it in the comment. Like, hey, my name is Dad and I like pancakes and bunnies. Why not? Try to say that in French. Je vais mémoriser 5 chansons françaises. I'll memorize 5 French songs. Je vais mémoriser 5 chansons françaises. I'll memorize 5 French songs. If you are into old songs, there is uh, Charles Trenet, who was an old singer and has... He also articulates really well. And sometimes got funny songs, maybe with puns. Or you can also find some more French modern songs if you're into this. But it should be kind of... rappy. <laughs> so... Maybe it's hard to understand. Je vais finir de mémoriser 350 mots avec flashcards sur frenchpod101.com. I'll finish memorizing 350 words with flashcards on frenchpod101.com. Je vais finir de mémoriser 350 mots avec flashcards sur frenchpod101.com. I'll finish memorizing 350 words with flashcards on frenchpod101.com. So, try them out! On the website. Somewhere, here, down. Je vais écrire 10 cartes postales en français à mes amis français. I write 10 postcards in French to my French friends. Je vais écrire 10 cartes postales en français à mes amis français. I write 10 postcards in French to my French friends. Yo, good luck with that. Send a nice postcard from your country. Je vais maîtriser 150 mots en mémorisant 5 mots par jour. I'll master 150 words by memorizing 5 words a day. Je vais maîtriser 150 mots en mémorisant 5 mots par jour. I'll master 150 words by memorizing 5 words a day. That's one month's worth of words. Shouldn't be too hard, you can do it. Je vais parler avec des locuteurs natifs plusieurs fois par semaine. I'll talk to native speakers several times a week. Je vais parler avec des locuteurs natifs plusieurs fois par semaine. I talk to native speakers several times a week. With FrenchPod 101 Premium Plus thingy, you get your own native teacher. You can find many services online to also find friends and talk to them. So tell me what are your goals for the year and maybe you have some of these too. And we'll see you next time. New Year dance. Wow. I'm a goat. That's not the sound of a goat. Okay. Me phrase it there. Three second memory. Wink, wink, wink. Nope. <laughs> no, Siri. Bah. Except for you, watch. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchBot101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 popular train stations in France. Let's begin. I take the train a lot. Metzville. 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 La gare de Metzville est inscrite comme un monument historique depuis le 15 janvier 1975. La gare de Metzville est inscrite comme monument historique depuis le 15 janvier 1975. The Metzville station has been registered as a historical monument since January 15th. 1975. I... I've been to Metz once. 
I don't remember using the train though. Paris, gare de Lyon. Paris, gare de Lyon. Paris, gare de Lyon. La gare de Paris, gare de Lyon se situe dans le 12e arrondissement de Paris. La gare de Paris, gare de Lyon se situe dans le 12e arrondissement de Paris. The Paris Gare de Lyon station is located in the 12th district of Paris. This is a really big one. Limoges Bénédictin. Limoges Bénédictin. Limoges Bénédictin. La gare de Limoges Bénédictin est une œuvre de l'architecte Roger Gontier. La gare de Limoges Bénédictin est une œuvre de l'architecte Roger Gontier. The Limoges Benedictin station was designed by architect Roger Gontier. You don't pronounce the S, you don't say Benedictins, you say Benedictin. Paris Nord. Paris Nord. Paris Nord. La gare de Paris Nord a figuré dans le film Les Poupées Russes. La gare de Paris Nord a figuré dans le film Les Poupées Russes. The Paris Nord station was in the movie Russian Dolls. Hmm, I need to watch that movie. La Rochelle Ville. La Rochelle Ville. La Rochelle Ville. La gare de la Rochelle Ville est liée à des villes comme Tours, Bordeaux ou Paris. La gare de la Rochelle Ville est liée à des villes comme Tours, Bordeaux ou Paris. The La Rochelleville station links cities like Tours, Bordeaux, and Paris. La Rochelle is beautiful. It's a maritime, a maritime a city, and um, yeah, they have this big, uh, how do you call that, monument? Really interesting to visit. Strasbourg Ville. Strasbourg Ville. Strasbourg Ville. La gare de Strasbourg Ville a une grosse Verrière. La gare de Strasbourg-Ville a une grosse verrière. The Strasbourg-Ville station has a huge glass roof. So in French, you won't say Bourg, but you say just Bourg. You don't pronounce the J, G. The G, you don't pronounce the G. Strasbourg, not Strasbourg. Marseille, Saint-Charles. Marseille, Saint-Charles. Marseille Saint Charles. La gare de Marseille Saint Charles a 16 voies. That's a lot. La gare de Marseille Saint Charles a 16 voies. The Marseille Saint Charles station has 16 tracks. Yeah, a lot of uh, trains goes there. Rouen rive droite. Rouen rive droite. Rouen rive droite. La gare de Rouen Rive Droite a été mise en service en 1847. La gare de Rouen Rive Droite a été mise en service en 1847. The Rouen Rive Droite station opened in 1847. There is also Rouen Rive Gauche. Rouen Rive Gauche. Tour. Tour. Tours. La gare de Tours fait 49 mètres d'altitude. La gare de Tours fait 49 mètres d'altitude. The tour station is 49 mètres high. Never been. Super high. Gare d'Orsay. Gare d'Orsay. Gare d'Orsay. La gare d'Orsay est devenue un musée. La gare d'Orsay est devenue un musée. La gare d'Orsay station became a museum. I know the quai d'Orsay. Might be a bit different. Hi everyone! If you are coming to France, you will probably need to take the train or the metro, and probably even in Paris. So let's have 10 phrases to survive at the station, because it's pretty hard in there. It's the jungle! J'aimerais aller à... I'd like to go to... J'aimerais aller à... I would like to go to... Then put the name of the place. Whether it's a city, if you are taking the train, or if it's a metro, you might want to know more precise location. So, if you can find someone at the ticket counter, just ask. J'aimerais aller à... And then they will give you the directions. Est-ce la bonne plateforme pour... Is it the right platform for... Est-ce la bonne plateforme pour... Is it the right platform for... Place.
So if the station is really big, you would have a lot of platforms. And sometimes it might get confusing, so you might want to ask if you're on the right place. And if it's a metro, for example, or, or a tramway, uh, they go both directions, so you want to sh be sure you are on the right side of the platform to get the right direction, or else you would go the other way, and it can get tricky. À quelle heure est le dernier train? What time is the last train? À quelle heure est le dernier train? What time is the last train? This question sounds so Japanese. <laughs> if it's a big normal train, mm. they may have trains all day and sometimes even night trains. And if you are talking about a metro or tramway train, then depending on the cities, sometimes they finish later, but around midnight is a good safe spot for the last train. So try to get them before midnight. Sometimes they have some after, but that's mostly in bigger cities. So you don't want to take that risk. Où puis-je changer pour? Where do I change for? Où puis-je changer pour? Where can I change for? Place. I didn't change at the proper spot and ended up 250 kilometers away from where I was supposed to be. <laughs> ah, whoopsie. Be sure to check that. And be sure also to have enough time before trains to change. If you are going from a big train to a big train and going through a big train station, or even through a big city, sometimes they have many train stations, so you need enough time to go from one station to another. So be careful with that. Où est la gare? Where is the train station? Où est la gare? Where is the train station? Where is the train station? This is not a sentence to survive at the station. <laughs> because you're not in the station, you're looking for it. Ask your local policeman. Train stations are usually indicated, so they should be easy to find. But if you don't know, just ask. Anyone really. Où est-ce que je peux acheter un billet? Where can I buy a ticket? Où est-ce que je peux acheter un billet? Where can I buy a ticket? If you are going abroad from France, sometimes you will have to queue at the ticket counter to get your ticket. Usually people speak English. Où sont les distributeurs automatiques de billets? Where are the ticket machines? Où sont les distributeurs automatiques de billets? Where are the ticket machines? In the station, duh. They are a bit everywhere. Est-ce que ce bus va à? Does this bus go to? Est-ce que ce bus va à? Does this bus go to? Place? You can ask this to the driver of the bus. Because sometimes, again, the, the map for all the bus routes can be pretty tricky to understand and you cannot really be sure if you are on the right side of the road to take the right bus in the right direction. So you should ask your bus driver if you're not sure. Où est l'arrêt de bus? Where is the bus stop? Où est l'arrêt de bus? Where is the bus stop? Depending on the city, you will have many bus lines. So you want to find the right bus stop for the right bus line. So if you find a bus stop, it may not be your right line. So be sure to check that too. Le train a du retard. The train's running late. Le train a du retard. The train is running late. It is indeed. Mostly buses are late in France. Trains are okay-ish. They can depart on time. Don't expect them to be really precise. But still be on time just in case it leaves on time this one time. That was a lot of time. Timey time. So have you ever taken a bus or a train in France? And how was it? And was it on time? See you next time. Have a good ride and good luck with it. Boop. That's my train pose. It's getting hot in here. Welcome back, watchers. This week we are going to learn about 20 must know family words. Here we go. Mère, mother. Mère, mother. My mother is tall. Ma mère est grande. Like really tall. Père, father. Père, father. My father can cook really well. Mon père peut cuisiner très bien. He's the best. Sœur, sister. Sœur, sister. I don't have a sister. Je n'ai pas de sœur. Frère, brother. Frère, brother. You are like a brother to me. Tu es comme un frère pour moi. Petite sœur. Younger sister. Petite sœur. Younger sister. Ma petite sœur vient de naître. My younger sister was just born. Jésus d'Aigny. Grand frère. Older brother. 
grand frère, older brother. My older brother helped me build a treehouse. Mon grand frère m'a aidé à construire une cabine. Cabine is kind of a treehouse or any kind of wooden tiny house, even if it's on the floor. Cousin, 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 cousin. My cousin is still in school. Ma cousine est encore à l'école. Cousine is the feminine and cousin will be the masculine one. Oncle, uncle, oncle, uncle. My uncle repairs cars. Mon oncle répare des voitures and also build some. Tante, aunt, tante, aunt. My aunt's cooking is really good. La cuisine de ma tante est délicieuse. Grand-mère, grandmother, grand-mère, grandmother. My grandmother is baking cookies. Ma grand-mère est en train de cuire des cookies. Yummy, hot warm cookies from grandma. Grand-père, grandfather, grandfather, grand-père. Mon grand-père avait l'habitude de fabriquer des radios. My grandfather used to build radios. Partenaire, partner. Partenaire, partner. Let me introduce you to my partner. Laissez-moi vous présenter mon partenaire. Épouse, wife. Épouse, wife. I met my wife 20 years ago. J'ai rencontré ma femme il y a 20 ans. And since then, we always have a beautiful love. Ah. Marie, husband. Marie, husband. My husband brought me chocolate. Mon mari m'a amené du chocolat. He's the best, isn't he? Fils, son. Fils, son. Like father and son. Comme père et fils. We are a family. Fille, daughter. Fille, daughter. My daughter is in university. My fille est à l'université. Nièce, niece. Nièce, niece. Ma nièce est la fille de ma sœur. My niece is the daughter of my sister. Neveu, nephew. Neveu, nephew. My nephew likes to play football. Mon neveu aime jouer au foot. Belle-mère, mother-in-law. Belle-mère, mother-in-law. My mother-in-law is really sweet. Ma belle-mère est très gentille. Yes, I'm lucky like this. Beau-père, father-in-law. Beau-père, father-in-law. My father-in-law fixes planes. That's a real job. Mon beau-père répare des avions. C'est un vrai travail. And it's the end. You guys are to my family. See you. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 lines you need to reject a date. Let's begin. It's going to be fun. Désolée, mais j'ai déjà autre chose de prévu. Désolée, mais j'ai déjà autre chose de prévu. Sorry, but I already have another plan. This is simple and clear. You can actually use it also to refuse any invitation, not only a date. I do that a lot, sorry guys. Ah, je dois travailler tard aujourd'hui. Ah. Je dois travailler tard aujourd'hui. Oh, I have to work late today. This is a reasonable way to refuse a date you don't want to go on. The other person won't ask you too many explanations as it's clear that you won't have time for anything else than work. That's a good one. Oh, je suis en retard pour mes cours. Désolé, je ne peux pas. Oh, je suis en retard pour mes cours. Désolé, je ne peux pas. Oh, I am late for class. Sorry, I can't. I use that a lot actually when um, they ask me in the street if I can sign or if I can pay something because, yeah, you know, I don't have time. Um, yeah, this is what I do. If you are a student, this works well. But keep in mind that classes are limited to certain days and hours and you can't use it to refuse a date on a Sunday. Hmm, I'm pretty sure that there are classes on Sundays too, like acting classes, for example. So you can use it on Sundays too. Je dois étudier pour mes examens de fin d'année. Je dois étudier pour mes examens de fin d'année. I have to study for my final terms exams. <laughs> yeah, I remember using that recently. If you are a student, you definitely need to learn this, as you will have to take a final exam sooner or later. Ah, je viens d'accepter d'aller en soirée avec les filles. Désolée. Ah. Oh. 
Je viens d'accepter d'aller en soirée avec les filles. Désolée. Oh, I just agreed to go out with the girls tonight. Sorry. You can use this to refuse an invitation for the evening. As you can see, you can refer to your girlfriends as les filles. I use that a lot or like sometimes when a man asks me, hey, do you have a boyfriend? I say, no, désolé, j'ai, I have a girlfriend. J'ai une copine. Hmm, je dois vérifier mon emploi du temps. Je peux te répondre plus tard. Hmm, je dois vérifier mon emploi du temps. Je peux te répondre plus tard. Hmm, I've got to check my schedule. Can I get back to you later? Use this when you don't want to decline right away. You can later send a message saying that you are busy. Yeah, that's actually a good uh, way to buy time, you know, and be like, hey, well, maybe I can, maybe I cannot, but actually you already know, you already made up your mind. Ces derniers temps, je suis très occupé. Ces derniers temps, je suis très occupé. Ces derniers temps, je suis très occupé. I've been very busy lately. Yes, I had. This is not a clear way to refuse an invitation as you don't want to say anything about your availability. So you better add something like I need to rest. J'ai besoin de me reposer. J'ai besoin de me reposer. Here, um, just make sure when you say très occupé, you gotta do the liaison, liaison in between because there is a S and then you do the liaison with the O. So très occupé, not très occupé. Très occupé. J'ai quelque chose d'urgent à faire. J'ai quelque chose d'urgent à faire. I have something urgent to do. If you don't want to be asked details, be sure to use a serious tone of voice when saying this. J'ai quelque chose d'urgent à faire. Mm, no, that was bad. J'ai quelque chose d'urgent à faire. Maybe better. Je ne suis pas intéressée. Désolée. Je ne suis pas intéressée. Désolé. I am not interested. Sorry. I use that a lot. This is the ultimate way to refuse a date. Be careful when using it because you may hurt the other person. Yeah, well, you gotta be direct and clear, right? Je n'ai pas le temps. Je n'ai pas le temps. I don't have time. This is short and clear, but if you don't add some explanations, you may sound very rude. Hi, everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Top Words. Today, we will be talking about five amazing love quotes from French songs. Let's go! Je l'aime à mourir by Francis Cabrel. I love her so much I could die. Je l'aime à mourir is a song by Francis Cabrel released in 1979. The album sold more than 600,000 copies in France and the song remains the biggest single of Francis Cabrel. Obviously, it's a love song. It's about a man who is deeply in love with a woman who transforms his life. The song is really poetic and full of imagery. For example, it says that he likes to spend time with her so much that he lost track of time. Les Amoureux des Bons Publics by Georges Brassens The Lovers on Public Benches This famous song has been written and sang by the no less famous Georges Brassens. He was inspired by Raymond René, a French cartoonist known for having created Les Amoureux, The Lovers, which he presented on many mediums. The song is smart, funny, and you can feel that Brassens looks at the lovers with a friendly eye. La Vie en Rose by Edith Piaf. Life in Pink. The song's title can be translated in various ways. For example, Life in Rosy Hoos, or Life Through Rose-Tinted Glasses, but its literal meaning is Life in Pink. It is one of the most famous French songs. Written and sang by Edith Piaf, it refers to the state of joy that love puts you in. When you are deeply in love, everything appears bright and cheerful. Released after the war, the song La Vie en Rose made Piaf internationally famous. The most famous quote of this song is from the chorus. L'été indien by Jodassin. Indian summer. 
Indian Summer is a song performed by Jodassin, released in 1975. This song is the greatest success of his career. He sold 950,000 copies in France and almost 2 million copies worldwide. The song was released in 25 countries and was translated into several languages. It's about a man who recalls the good old days from the past. In particular, a magic moment he spent with his love when they were visiting the USA. Pourquoi tu m'aimes encore by Céline Dion So that you love me again. Pourquoi tu m'aimes encore is a song made famous by Céline Dion. It was written and composed by Jean-Jacques Goldman, a French lyricist and singer. The song was the most played song on French radio stations in the year 1995. The song is about a woman who wants her love back and is ready to do anything for it. Okay, that's the end of this topic. Welcome back, watchers. Uh-huh, bye. So welcome back, watchers. This week, we're going to talk about must-know expressions for agreeing and disagreeing. Are you ready? C'est vrai, that's true. Yeah, this is just a simple answer for when something is true. C'est vrai can also be a question if um, you want to confirm that someone said something or you are really surprised. C'est vrai? Like, oh, really? Yeah, or we just say it casually. Ah, like, oh, c'est vrai. Or, ah, did you notice the sky was blue today? Or, tu as remarqué que le ciel était bleu aujourd'hui? Ah, oh, c'est vrai. Oh, that's true. Uh -huh. <laughs> Je crois que oui. I guess so. Do you think the concert is going to be at 8 p.m. today? Yeah, I think so. Tu crois que le concert est à 8 heures ce soir? Ah, je crois que oui. So this is not a 100% sure answer, so you still have to check it. But you are 75 to 80% sure it's true. Absolument, absolutely. That's when you are 100% convinced it's true. Or right, or what you're saying. I think we should go with the blue color for the marketing campaign. Absolutely! Je crois que nous devrions choisir le bleu pour la campagne marketing. Absolument. And not the filthy yellow. It's also a really formal and polite manner to say yes. For example, if you're in a fancy hotel and you say, oh, is the bar on the first floor? And you say, absolument. Absolutely. Qu'en pensez-vous? What do you think? What do you think about this week's lesson? Leave a comment. Que pensez-vous de la leçon de cette semaine? Laissez-moi un commentaire. What do you think about the food here? Que pensez-vous de la nourriture ici? I think it's really good. Yeah, it's totally cool. Peut-être, maybe. Do you think you will be able to come tonight? Maybe. Est-ce que tu penses que tu pourras venir ce soir? Peut-être. That's 50-50 level of sureness. Je ne pense pas. I don't think so. Do you think you can finish this task before the day is over? I don't think so. Tu penses que tu pourras finir ce travail avant que la journée soit finie Je ne pense pas. Bien sûr, of course. Can I have fries with my chicken Of course. Est-ce que je peux avoir des frites avec mon poulet Bien sûr. Yes. Oh, mom, can I go out Maman, est-ce que je peux sortir Bien sûr, of course. Just be careful and call mommy when you arrive. J'allais le dire. I was just going to say that. Or sometimes we use... Uh, Tu l'as dit, which is, oh yeah, you, right, you said so. Uh-huh. Oh my God, have you seen Betty's new hair color? It's terrible. J'allais le dire. I was just about to say that. <coughs> Je crains d'être en désaccord. I'm afraid I disagree. I don't like black people. I'm afraid I disagree. <laughs> That's racist, you twat. Je n'aime pas la musique pop. Je crains d'être en désaccord. I don't like pop music. I'm afraid I disagree. Hey, what kind of music do you like, guys? Leave a comment. Aucun doute là-dessus. No doubt about it. Here you are 120% sure. It's true. So use it when you are only really sure. This episode of Weekly Word is going to be awesome. No doubt about it. Cet épisode de French Weekly Words va être super bien. Aucun doute là-dessus. Il va signer le contrat. Aucun doute là-dessus. He is going to sign the contract. No doubt about it. So that's about it for this week. Don't forget to check the website frenchpod101.com for more French lessons. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Huh?
<laughs> so welcome back watchers are you hungry because today we're going to be talking about 10 french foods here we go i know i'm hungry aligo 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 is a french dish made of potatoes mixed with melted cheese and french cream and butter and a lot of yummies and salted pepper on mange de l'aligo à noël we eat aligo for Christmas. Bouillabaisse. 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 So bouillabaisse is a French dish from south of France, from the city of uh, Marseille. And it's a fish too. And it's tasty. Camembert. Camembert. A cheese. And depending on the quality of it, it can get really smelly. So if it's old and good, it will be really smelly and gooey, and when you slice it, really, it will go like boo. Clafouti. Clafouti. Clafouti is a kind of tart or pie, and usually we put um, berries inside, like cherries or raspberries, or any berries, a mix of berries. You can also have some with apricot. Je mange des clafouti en été. I eat clafouti in summer. Crème de marron. Chestnut puree. Crème de marron. Chestnut puree. So it's really just chestnut and sugar. I'm not really a fan of it and some people just eat it like that, out of the pot. La crème de marron est très sucrée. Chestnut puree is really sweet. Fugas. Fugas. You can put a lot of stuff in, like olives and dried uh, duck meat. This one is really good. Sweet one can be filled with uh, raisins or some fruits maybe, or just the crispy kind of bread. Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Do you know the movie Ratatouille with the tiny rat from Disney? So it's a stew made with lots and lots of veggies. And you can also have it cold. Like you make it, you make a big pot of it, and the day after you can eat it cold and it's really good too. La ratatouille peut se manger chaude ou froide. You can eat ratatouille either hot or cold. Salade niçoise. Salade niçoise. Niçoise means it's from the city of Nice, which is in the south again. You can have uh, olives, anchovies inside, uh, cold potatoes. It's called salad, but there is no actual salad in there. You can have like long green beans. And it's really fresh and really healthy too. La salade niçoise vient de Nice. Salade niçoise comes from Nice. Soup au pistou. Basil soup. So it's a basil soup with olive oil, garlic. La soupe de pistou est faite avec du basilic. Soupe de pistou, or pistou soup, is made out of basil. Tapenade. Tapenade is a paste made of olives and garlic and capers. And most people add anchovies in it. It's really tasty and really salty. So if you like salty stuff and anchovies, maybe you will like this one. So you can spread it on bread or just dip your bread sticks in there. It's also a recipe from the south because they like fishes and olives. And it's the end. What's your favorite French food? You can leave it in the comments if you have other examples. And this made me hungry, so I'm going to have my tiny snack. So we'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe for more French videos. Or check the website for more cultural insights and more French lessons. We'll see you next time. A bientôt. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about five major cities in France. Let's begin. Paris. 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 Everyone knows Paris, I think. Paris, or Paris, is the most beautiful city in the world. Paris est la capitale de France. Paris est la capitale de France. Paris is the capital of France. Je viens de là-bas. I am from there. Marseille. 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 Marseille is in the south of France, near Italy, and it's a harbor city. Marseille est la deuxième plus grande ville de France. Marseille est la deuxième plus grande ville de France. Marseille is the second largest city in France. It's beautiful and really sunny. Lyon. Lyon. 
Lyon. Lyon is near Switzerland and it's well known for its food and beautiful monuments. Chaque année, il y a la fête des Lumières à Lyon. Chaque année, il y a la fête des Lumières à Lyon. The Festival of Lights is held every year in Lyon. I have never been, unfortunately. Je ne suis jamais allée, malheureusement. Toulouse. 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 Toulouse is in southwestern France and it's known as a college town. Le surnom de Toulouse est la ville rose. I didn't know that. Je ne savais pas. Le surnom de Toulouse est la ville rose. Toulouse's nickname is the Pink City. That's a nice name. Nice. 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 Nice is also in the south, very sunny and with a beautiful seaside. Il y a de belles plages à Nice. Il y a de belles plages à Nice. There are nice beaches in Nice. Beaches, beaches, beaches. I miss Nice. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 words to know before taking the airplane. Let's begin. I just went on one actually a few days ago. Cabin. 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 J'ai seulement un gros bagage en cabine. J'ai seulement un gros bagage en cabine. I only have one large cabin bag. Yeah, I had a big one myself. Ceinture de sécurité. Ceinture de sécurité. Seat belt. Il faut attacher votre ceinture de sécurité avant le décollage. Il faut attacher votre ceinture de sécurité avant le décollage. You must fasten your seat belt before take off. Yeah, usually the um, air hostess, how do you call that? The flight, the flight attendant asks you to do that um, right before take off. Numéro de siège. Numéro de siège. Seat number. Quel est ton numéro de siège? Quel est ton numéro de siège? What is your seat number? So when I took the plane to go to Hawaii, actually I found out that I had the same seat number as another man. So I had to ask him to show me his ticket. And yeah, we did have the same. So I had to change my seat, unfortunately. And he got a VIP seat. And I did not. Coussin. Coussin. Pillow. Makes me want to sleep right now. J'ai oublié mon coussin. J'ai oublié mon coussin. I forgot my pillow. I never bring one in um, in a plane, but actually international plane, they give one, but small, you know, six hours flight, they don't really give one or they ask you ten dollars to get one. Décalage horaire. Décalage horaire. Time difference. De combien est le décalage horaire entre les USA et la France? De combien est le décalage horaire entre les USA et la France? What is the time difference between US and France? I believe it's about nine hours from what I recall. I think my parents told me that, or oh, eight hours. I know that with Hawaii, US uh, from Los Angeles and Hawaii, this is three hours, um, three hours more, three hours less. Well, depending on how you say it. Compartiment au-dessus des sièges. Compartiment au-dessus des sièges. Overhead storage compartment. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de place dans le compartiment au-dessus des sièges. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de place dans le compartiment au-dessus des sièges. There isn't much space in the overhead storage compartment. Usually this is where you put uh, your carry-on luggage. And people always fill it out. Sortie de secours. Sortie de secours. Emergency exit. That is the most scary thing to hear. Où est la sortie de secours? Où est la sortie de secours? Where is the emergency exit? They always ask, uh, they always show you this video when you're in a plane and they show you where are the emergency exit. Hopefully, nobody has ever to use them because this is really scary. Siège. 
siège, seat. Les sièges sont confortables. Les sièges sont confortables. The seats are comfortable. Well, usually on planes, hmm, the seats, maybe if you are first class, they're comfortable, but if you're not, not sure they are. Hôtesse de l'air. Hôtesse de l'air. Flight attendant. L'hôtesse de l'air est gentille. L'hôtesse de l'air est gentille. The flight attendant is nice. Yeah, I just flew with uh, Hawaiian Airlines and they were really nice. Pilote. Pilote. Pilot. Mon cousin veut devenir pilote. Mon cousin veut devenir pilote. My cousin wants to become a pilot. Um, not sure mine wants to. So welcome back, Quarters. How are your studies going? Because this week we're going to talk about 10 ways to remember words. Here we go. J'apprends les racines des mots et comment les mots différents sont liés les uns aux autres. I learn about the roots of words and how different words are related to each other. Most of the um, roots of words in French are from Latin and Greek, ancient Greek and ancient Latin. So sometimes when you know the history of the word with the Latin word, it can help you remember the word or understanding where it comes from. J'associe des nouveaux mots avec des mots qui sont similaires dans ma langue maternelle. I associate new words with words that sound similar in my native language. J'associe des nouveaux mots avec des mots qui sont similaires dans ma langue maternelle. This one works too, but it can be tricky for some of the words. For example, pub. You write pub or pub in French is advertising, whereas in English it's the place where you go drinking. So be careful with that one and not mix words that are the same, but are not really the same. Let's go. J'essaie d'utiliser la langue couramment dans le contexte de la vie quotidienne. I try to use the language routinely in the context of daily life. J'essaie d'utiliser la langue couramment dans le contexte de la vie quotidienne. I try to use the language routinely in the context of daily life. One good tip for that is, for example, on your freezer or your refrigerator, you put some stickers with the words or or the food that's inside. The door, you put in French, la porte, and le frigo, the fridge, or spoons, les cuillères. So if you put the stickers, you will see them every day in your everyday life, and it can help with remembering the words. J'essaye de réfléchir en français pour que cela devienne naturel dans mon mécanisme de pensée. I try to think in French so it becomes natural in my thought process. J'essaye de réfléchir en français pour que cela devienne naturel dans mon mécanisme de pensée. I try to sing in French so it becomes natural in my thought process. And after a while, you can even start dreaming in the foreign language. It's funny. Sometimes I dream in English. J'utilise la répétition. Je lis, j'écris et je prononce des mots sans arrêt. I use repetition. Reading, writing and speaking words over and over again. J'utilise la répétition. Je lis, j'écris et je prononce des mots sans arrêt. I use repetition, reading, writing and speaking words over and over again. Yeah, depending on the language, you need to write them a lot because French is kind of really different the way you write it and the way you pronounce it. So try writing it a lot. Je dis des mots à haute voix afin que je puisse les entendre correctement. I say words out loud so I can actually hear them. Je dis des mots à voix haute afin que je puisse les entendre correctement. I say words out loud so I can actually hear them. Singing in the shower! <laughs> Why not? Go sing in the shower by yourself, this way you can hear the words. And it's easier to actually sing words sometimes than just speaking them out loud. So go and take a shower and sing in French! Je parle le plus possible avec des locuteurs natifs. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. Je parle le plus possible avec des locuteurs natifs. I speak as often as possible with native speakers, which is a really good way. Not only you get to learn the language and you also get to make friends and they can correct you and help you with pronunciation and sentences. So, yeah. Je regarde souvent la télévision ou des vidéos YouTube qui sont conçues pour les jeunes enfants. I often watch TV or YouTube videos that are designed for young children. Je regarde souvent la télévision ou des vidéos YouTube qui sont conçues pour les jeunes enfants. 
And this is also a good way because it will teach you in the video like it is to children and you will learn what children will do. Yeah, you can look at Dora the Explorer in French and she will repeat the words for you very often. So in French, swiper, no swiping will be arrête de chipper, chipper. Because chipper is a cute word to say steal. So it's like, stop stealing, steely. Arrête de chipper, chipper. Arrête de chipper, chipper. Arrête de chipper, chipper. J'écoute des chansons et j'apprends les paroles par cœur. I listen to songs and memorize the lyrics. I used to do that and check the lyrics and words when I wouldn't understand. And then realize that all my favorite songs have stupid lyrics. Je suis persévérante. Je pratique tous les jours en parlant à ma famille ou à mes chiens, même s'ils ne me comprennent pas. I'm persistent in practicing every day by talking to my family or my dogs, even so they don't understand me. Je suis persévérante. Je pratique tous les jours en parlant à ma famille ou à mes chiens, même s'ils ne comprennent pas. I'm persistent in practicing every day by talking to my family or my dogs, even though they don't understand me. Hello kitty, how are you doing today? Ah, oh. aren't we sad people? Hi doggy, you're my only friend. Let me speak French to you. That's a good doggy in French. Yeah, sure. At least you are interacting with people or animals or stuff. Plants like it when you speak to them. They grow better in Sims. So if you want a fancy plant, you can just speak fancy French to it. And it's the end. So what's your best tip to learn a new language? You can leave it in the comment. Don't forget to subscribe for more French learning and check the website for more French and cultural point and everything else. We we'll see you next time. A bientôt. Parate de robar, robador. No robas, robador. No robas, robador. Oui, oui. It is. Yes, yes. Welcome back, watchers. Today we are going to learn about what adjective describes your personality best. Let's go. Intelligent, smart. Intelligent, smart. Are you smart? Êtes-vous intelligent? I'm the smartest. Je suis la plus intelligente. Huh? Or je suis le plus intelligent, if you are a guy. Émotif, emotional. Émotif, emotional. <laughs> I, I remember that one time I got really emotional because uh, we, we ate all the apples and there was the last apple standing by itself and I got really sad for the apple because the apple was all alone. Hashtag true story. Les films me rendent émotif. Movies make me emotional. And then when the guy loves the girl but he dies in the end and then they cannot be together ever again like in the bridges of Madison Country, this was super sad and made me emotional. What makes you emotional? Qu'est-ce qui vous rend émotif? Leave a comment and tell me. <laughs> cool. 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 You, you can just draw the cool sunglasses on my face. I am so cool. Je suis trop cool. Honnête. Honest. Honnête, honest. Je vais être honnête avec vous. I'm going to be honest with you. This is one simple sentence you don't want to hear because then something really bad is going to follow that. Tan, tan, tan. Paresseux. Lazy. Lazy. Paresseux. You are very lazy. Vous êtes très paresseux. Paresseux is also uh, the French name for slas. <laughs> I'm very lazy. Je suis très paresseuse. Being lazy is nice. Être paresseux, c'est bien. From time to time. Drôle, funny. Drôle, funny. I'm not funny. Je ne suis pas drôle. Of course I'm funny. Bien sûr, je suis drôle. Huh. What's so funny? Qu'est-ce qu'il y a de si drôle? Romantique. Romantic. 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 I had a romantic weekend. J'ai passé un weekend romantique. A romantic dinner. Un dîner romantique. Un dîner aux quatre chandelles. Is what we call a romantic dinner. Is saying you put up candles and have a nice dinner with your significant other. Hi guys, so romantic. Yeah. Sérieux. Serious. Sérieux. Serious. I'm super serious. <laughs> Je suis super sérieux. Mm. A serious subject. Un sujet sérieux. My teacher is very serious. Mon professeur est très sérieux. Amical, friendly. 
Amical, friendly. This cat is very friendly. Ce chat est très amical. It's not true, he's just tricking you to give him food and then he will slash your face in your sleep. She is very friendly. Elle est très amicale. Grincheux, bad tempered. Grincheux, bad tempered. This is also the name of the dwarf in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Grincheux is the one that's always grumpy. So you can also say grumpy. So in French it's grincheux. My grandma is really bad tempered. Ma grand-mère est très grincheuse. Généreux. Generous. Généreux. Generous. Yeah, sometimes if you're my friend and you don't have money, then I will pay everything for you. And you don't have to give it back because you're my friend. He was very generous and gave all his money to charity. Il fut très généreux et donna tout son argent à une œuvre de charité. Generous. A generous serving. Une portion généreuse. When you get a big amount of food on your plate. Artistic. 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 This painting is very artistic. Cette peinture est très artistique. Or, better, uh, ce tableau est très artistique. Poly, polite. Poly, polite. She is very polite. Elle est très polie. I'm not very polite. Je ne suis pas très poli. I should be more polite. Je devrais être plus poli. Être poli au repas de famille. To be polite during family dinner. Indécis, indecisive. Indécis, indecisive. I'm really indecisive about the next sample sentence. Je suis très indécise à propos de la prochaine phrase. Hmm. I'm really indecisive about what I should have for dinner. Je suis très indécise à propos de ce que je devrais manger pour dîner. Because I like food, but I cannot eat too much at night. To be indecisive, être indécis. Gentil, kind. Gentil, kind. C'est très gentil de ta part. This is really kind of you. So it's the end for this week, but if you want to learn more French, visit frenchpod101.com, somewhere around, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Energetic. Energetic. Yeah! 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 Give me an L! Give me a Y! Give me an A! Yeah! I'm also very energetic today. Energetic. Hi, watchers! Are you coming to France soon? Because this week we are going to learn about 20 travel phrases you should know. Merci. Thank you. Anytime you receive something or someone was nice to you. Merci. Thank you. Excusez-moi. Excuse me. Anytime you bump into someone or if you step on the foot because the metro is crowded or if you need to call for the waiter's attention, use this one. Excusez-moi. Combien ça coûte? How much is this? Yeah, sometimes you won't find the prices on the items you are looking for, especially if you are going to a flea market in France. So just go, ah, this item, how much is it? Cet objet, combien ça coûte? Où est la gare? Where is the train station? This one can be quite convenient. If you are in a big city, where is the metro? Où est le métro? Le wifi est-il gratuit? Is the Wi-Fi free? If you want Wi-Fi in France, maybe some coffee shops now have it. They advertise it on the chalkboard outside. So come inside, we have Wi-Fi. Je voudrais ceci. I'd like this. Oh, I'd like this, please. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. If you don't know the name of the item you want in the menu, you can just point and say, Je voudrais ceci. I want this, please. Pourrions-nous avoir le menu, s'il vous plaît? Could we have the menu, please? Usually you have to ask for it. Sometimes the place is very crowded, so ask. Le menu, s'il vous plaît. Could we have the menu, please? Avez-vous des recommandations? Do you have any recommendations? If you are at a bar and want for some cocktail, it can be like, oh, I like something fruity. Do you have any recommendation? J'aimerais quelque chose de fruité. Avez-vous des recommandations? And then the bartender will make you some fancy cocktail. Je suis allergique aux cacahuètes. I'm allergic to peanuts. If you have any allergies, be sure to ask whenever you are going out or trying to eat something. People will be really nice about it. And sometimes it's even on the menu. If you have any allergies, there will be a sign saying, yes, yeah, this contains nut or this contains milk or this contains gluten. And you can make sure that you don't eat something you don't want to ingest. <laughs> Avez-vous des plats végétariens? Do you have any vegetarian dishes? 
If you are vegetarian or vegan, there will also be a sign very often on the menu saying this dish contains no meat or this is vegan safe, it's made with no animal grease or eggs or milk. Pourrais-je avoir l'addition? Could I have the check? Pourrais-je avoir l'addition s'il vous plaît? Could I have the check please? Prenez-vous la carte de crédit? Do you take credit card? Can I pay by credit card? Puis-je payer avec ma carte de crédit? Pourriez-vous me prendre en photo, s'il vous plaît? Could you take a picture of me, please? What, you don't have your selfie stick? Come on, that's something every traveler should have. Un, deux, trois, oui, Titi. Je voudrais un siège non fumeur, s'il vous plaît. I'd like to have a non-smoking seat, please. Well, restaurants in France have banned smoking inside for a couple of years now. So every restaurant you go to should be non-smoking. Smoking is only allowed in bars. Good luck with that. Do you have non-smoking seats? Avez-vous des sièges non fumeurs? Pourriez-vous me donner un rabais? Could you give me a discount? Un peu moins cher? A little bit cheaper? This is again if you go to flea market and especially on Sundays, you will have a bunch of sellers selling stuff from their homes. You can negotiate the price a lot over there. And getting an item half price is really common. So you can say, Ah, uh, un peu moins cher. Uh, ou, est-ce que je pourrais avoir un rabais? S'il vous plaît, give me a discount, please. Or make it cheaper, a tiny bit cheaper. Okay, more, more cheap, even, even cheaper, way, way cheaper. Okay, give it to me, free, now. Pourrais-je obtenir un plan? Could I get a map? Plan would be more a map of something you want inside, for example, if you're in a museum. And if you are outside and got lost and go to the information center, for example, you can ask, pourrais-je avoir une carte? Could I get a map? J'ai une réservation. I have a reservation. When you get to a restaurant and have a reservation, they will often ask you at the front desk, so do you have a reservation? Avez-vous une réservation? You can say, yes, I have a reservation. Oui, j'ai une réservation. Puis-je essayer? Can I try this on? Yeah, if you want to try some clothes, you can ask the staff. Puis-je essayer ceci? Can I try this? Parlez-vous anglais? Do you speak English? French people aren't really good at speaking English, but they will try their best. So if you find someone and cannot express yourself in French properly and ask them, Parlez-vous anglais? Do you speak English? They may say, no, not that much, but no, je, je ne parle pas beaucoup, ou je ne parle pas anglais. The most common sentence I learn in every language is, a beer, please. Une bière, s'il vous plaît. Anytime it's summer, it's hot, and you want something fresh. Une bière, s'il vous plaît. A beer, please. To go with your nice meal, or just to freshen up and chill with friends. So that's it for this week. What's your most used travel sentence? Leave me a comment to let me know. And if you want to learn more French, don't forget to check the website frenchpod101.com. We'll see you next time. See ya. Travel time. Welcome back, watchers. Have you been studying all right? Because this time we are going to talk about 10 phrases for bad students. Here we go. Were you a good student? I know I wasn't. <laughs> Let's see what this is about. First one is dormir en classe. To sleep in class. I used to do that. Je dors en classe près du radiateur. I sleep in class next to the heater. So the trick for it is to go in the back of the class and near the heater when it's winter. And then you can sleep in a warm and comfy place on your desk. And if you got the biggest dude of the class just sitting in front of you, it's perfect because then your teacher cannot see you anymore. Échouer à un cours. Fail a class. This I never did though. Well, if you fail a class, you are going to repeat it. Si on échoue un cours, on va le redoubler. So yeah, don't fail a class. Because then you have to take it again and again, and you don't like it, so please pass it the first time, this way it's done and over, which is nice. Fainéant, or fainéant, for feminine. Lazy. I'm so lazy. Je suis vraiment fainéant. J'étais trop fainéant et je n'ai pas fait mes devoirs. I was lazy and didn't do my homework. Bad student, bad. And then you have to come up with excuses for why you didn't do your homework. Like, my dog ate my paper. Uh, ne pas aller en classe. To skip class. What do you do when you are skipping class? Leave it in the comments for the other students. If you skip class, you're going to get noticed. 
Si vous n'allez pas en classe, vous allez recevoir une notice. And then your parents get angry at you and cut out your allowance. Brutaliser. To bully. That's super mean. <laughs> Don't do that. This is not even being a bad student. It's just being a bad person. <laughs> Don't bully people. Ne brutalisez pas les gens. I always bully the lot. <laughs> Plagia. Plagiarism. Or actually we say to copy. Copier. We're gonna copy someone's homework. Give me your homework so I can copy it. Passe-moi tes devoirs que je puisse les copier. Bad. Remettre à plus tard. To procrastinate. We also say procrastiner. I like procrastinating. J'aime procrastiner. Or j'aime remettre à plus tard. And then it's the last day and you didn't do it and you got your four pages long paper to write and you got no idea to where to start and then you are hopeless and then you put out an all nighter and then you are sad and tired and everything. Try to not procrastinate, even if we all do it a bit. Tricher à un examen. To cheat on a test. Like, like if you got sleeves, instead of writing on your hand because you can see it, you can put it on the back of your sleeves. Or when the teacher distributes your papers, then I would uh, not stuff under the paper on the table. And then put the paper back on and be like... <laughs> and then when you can't start the test, you just have all the answer under it on the table and you can just put the paper back on the table. <laughs> Bad. So what's your tip to cheat on the test? Leave it in the comment to help the other bad students. Élève absentéiste. Truant. That's kind of a harsh word. One who is absent from school without permission. Yet usually the bad guys will do this and not come to school and you can just see them outside smoking cigarettes and being all rebellious and not coming to class. Un élève absentéiste fait l'école buissonnière. A truant is doing bush school. That's how we call it in French, because you would just go hide behind the bushes instead of going to school. Chatterbox. Une pipelette. It sounds a bit feminine, but we use it for both genders. And uh, it's someone who talks a lot and always be like pss, 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 in class, and the teacher will turn and get angry and say, Stop speaking in my class, go outside. <laughs> On m'a mis dehors car je suis une pipelette. I was put outside of the class because I'm a chatterbox. <laughs> and it's the end. So what are your bad student tips? Tell me in the comments. And um, you can be a good student and subscribe to learn more French or check the website to learn more stuff because it's free in school, right? So we we'll see you next time. A bientôt! Yay! Let's be sad! Hi, watchers. This week is a sad week. We are going to talk about sad words. Why am I so sad over the tiny apple being alone? Let's start. Blessé, hurt. Blessé, hurt. You are hurting me. Tu me blesses. Because you are saying all those mean things and now I'm hurt. There you go. Découragé, discouraged. Découragé, discouraged. I'm really discouraged right now. I cannot find a simple sentence. Everything is going wrong and I'm so discouraged. Tout va mal en ce moment et je suis très découragé. Me. Don't be discouraged. Fight up. Yeah. Malheureux, miserable. Malheureux. Miserable. I'm so miserable. <laughs> Je suis trop malheureux, ma copine m'a largué. <laughs> Vexé, upset. Vexé, upset. What you said really upset me. Ce que tu as dit m'a vraiment vexé. Hmm. Upset face. Hmm. Vexé. Seul, lonely. Seul, lonely. This one is feminine. All the others are masculine, I don't know why. I'm feeling lonely. Je me sens seul. Would you guys keep me company? Leave a nice comment for everyone else who is feeling lonely and miserable to cheer the day up. Déçu, disappointed. Déçu, disappointed. This movie was disappointing. Ce film m'a déçu. Tu me déçois. <laughs> That's super harsh. This is one of the things I really don't want to hear. Épuisé, exhausted. Épuisé, exhausted. After work, I'm really exhausted. Je suis vraiment épuisé après le travail. Triste, sad. Triste, sad. You make me sad. Tu me rends triste. This was a sad story. C'était une histoire triste. Déprimé, depressed. Déprimé, depressed. This makes me feel depressed. Ça me déprime. When it's rainy outside, while well, it's Saturday and you plan to go out and you cannot because it's raining. This makes me depressed. 
ça nous déprime. Énervé, angry. Énervé, angry. This makes me angry. Ça m'énerve. So that's it for this week. So tell me what makes you sad in a comment or leave a nice comment for the sad people. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget to check frenchpod101.com for more French. Bye bye. Lonely. I am so lonely. Sad. Je suis si sad. <laughs>